Hello and welcome to Fresh Face Comics, the comic book podcast for our lifelong comic book reader, guys, it's friends of the world of comics for the first time. My name is Joey Morgan, the aforementioned lifelong reader. With me, as always, is Jacob Licklider, the aforementioned newbie. In the name of the Superman, the Batman, and the Wonder Woman, we have the Trinity. God damn it. <laughs> Today we're talking about Trinity War and, and the Grid, but mostly And the Grid. Mainly Trinity, Trinity War. War. Um, we're continuing our Jeff Johns uh, Justice League reading today, um, which I'm very excited for because I think we could say right off the bat, you know, I think most people agree it's not the most like stellar story, but it, it's going to be a really, really interesting one to dissect, I think. Yes. Well, um, there's some people who absolutely love this story. Like, I, don't, I don't think I've ever come across anyone that like adores it, though. I don't I, know. I know. Well, I know Kian really likes it. Oh, like, really? I did not know that. Yeah, I was talking. I believe I was talking to him near. I was finishing. I'm like, just like, this is. This is this is weird, right? It's like, oh, I remember enjoying it. I remember it being good. Huh. Um, interesting. Interesting, yes. <laughs> well, more on that later, because I know uh, we got some uh, some really cool Twitter questions for this one. So, um, yeah, very excited to talk about those. Um, I guess jumping into our non-spoiler section, Jacob, what is the Grid and Trinity War about? So, I'm going to be honest, the Grid is filler, it's I, well, I mean, a, it, it does introduce a very important plot point for Trinity War. It does. Actually, two it, very important plot points. For it Trinity does. War. But it's very much Jeff Johns trying to write three issues, three in between issues. And honestly, what kind of fails. Um, the grid and Trinity War almost have opposite problems. The grid has a problem of being three issues that introduced a lot of interesting ideas very, very quickly, but doesn't have enough time to explore them. Mm. Because it's it's following up on the end of Justice League 17, where you have, it's like, right, we need to expand the League. So we're doing three issues of League expansion. Mm-hmm. And then Trinity War happens, and that is six issues of, uh, six main issues, and then six... Tie-in issues. Tie, yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah, technically they're, they're, tie-ins. They're, t- they're tie-in issues. Um... Yeah, and uh, and I think like I get what you're getting at there. Like, it's not quite enough ideas to fill out like twelve issues of a story. It really isn't. Yeah. And the tie-ins <laughs> have some of the more interesting ideas and plot developments. Um, I agree. I agree. It's uh, <clears throat> there's 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 a lot to talk about there, but at the same time, not enough. Um, I'm very excited to talk to talk about the tie-ins, but like some of those main issues are just have so much going on and it still feels somewhat empty at times i think yeah it's just it's it's quick it's 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 plot beat, i mean plot i mean beat, and, and, jeff, and jeff johns once again comes in with so much style like like he, he really knows how to just grab you with a story um but, I, yeah. I mean I, I will say i should probably say explicitly it's not bad like oh, neither no. of these no. volumes are bad no. and they all have uh, the, both volumes, I'd argue, have really standout moments. Um, there are there's uh, Justice League number eighteen and and twenty specifically have some really good individual character bits and in terms of the grid, and then Trinity War, all the tie-ins focused really interestingly on characters, really well. Um, yeah. I, I will say what's funny is. Um, Joey is a massive Constantine fan, and this is the first episode where we have a Constantine issue. We, we, we uh, do, we do, and he's a big part of the story. Um, yeah, it's uh, so. I mean, so what did you know about John Constantine actually going in? So okay, I had at least seen the first episode of the Matt Ryan show from. Oh, had you? I didn't. Know I had that. seen it like on air. Oh, with, okay. It is okay. I, but with did, did my you like brother it and air? my father? Did you like I, it on air? I remember enjoying it, but it was right around the time where basically all the DC TV stuff was happening and it was ramping up so much. I just could not follow everything. Ah, oh, that's um, But like, oh, I, man, I, I really recommend watching that whole show someday. It's it was only 13 episodes. It's so good. It's yeah, that's um, that's thank goodness it's short. And yeah, it's not. Um, oh, yeah, it's so good. But um, but so so that and did you have any other experience with the character? Well, you know, I've read the Sandman. That is correct. He is he is. In the Sandman, and of course, I we uh, if you if you've noticed our bonus episodes, we have done a bonus episode on the Sandman uh, Netflix series. Yes, um, yes, which has a season two is supposedly filming this year. So yes, yeah, yes. I, I believe they've confirmed dates actually. Oh, seriously? Like, okay. Yeah, it's like I did not know that. start this summer. Very cool. Um, Very cool for filming, not for 
release, obviously, because yeah. uh, productions take time to make, and some people need to learn that <laughs> shoots take time, writing takes time. Speaking of John Constantine, if I'm coughing at all throughout this episode, uh, I am just getting over COVID. Uh, so, yes. so just be just sorry about that if I cough at any point during that. We are we are very lucky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That you're that you're up to up to recording tonight. Oh man, and last week was so bad, so fucking bad. Um, but anyway, oh uh, yeah. So that was uh, your history with Constantine yeah. as a character, pretty and, much. And he's honestly his solo series has been one of the things that I'm interested in reading. I know we're gonna do it. Someday. Oh, you you know it's one of my favorite comics of all time. Like, yeah, like so we're, I know we're gonna, gonna do it. We're gonna. I, do I know, it like as soon as you're like, here's a Vertigo block. John Constantine. Hellblazer. You know, Hellblazer is gonna be in there. Yeah, it, it's gonna be in there. Yeah, um, um, absolutely. So, uh, so that, um, so on the, like the three Justice Leagues used in this. So you obviously you know Jeff Johns is Justice League. You know a bit about the JLA because of the setup that was there in Villain's Journey. Uh, but did you, did you know anything about the Just- Justice League Dark? Honestly, I didn't. I like I, I mean, you had mentioned you know they were all essentially ma- it was like the magic justice league yes yeah, the, the magic, magic side of the side. dc universe yeah. which is a cool side to give a team book and i'm oh totally like, i checked and it ran for 40 issues which i've read the whole thing it is fantastic um which you know considering the new 52 all the new 52 series at max ran for 52 issues that's a great run like yeah that, that, that made it right up to conversions so um, yeah which, which is where a lot of the new 52 titles got stopped the long-running ones that is um, yeah um, yeah so that was that um obviously this book also features a lot of characters that you're very familiar with all of our justice league members um a fair few of our jla members um once again just justice league dark is just that side that you don't know much about so i'm really curious to hear your thoughts on that and obviously we'll get more into that in the spoiler section also uh, oddly enough those specific issues uh the two justice league darks and then of course the constantine interlude i'd argue are the most interesting part of like the main story of trinity mm. war i agree i um, agree actually yeah yeah uh, i i i do have and, and when we get to the spoiler section we'll get to it i know what my least favorite issue of the collect of, of both of these collections is overall huh. um i don't know what it is but i have a feeling i might i could take a decent stab at you it you could probably take a decent stab at it mm-hmm. because it's you know it's uh L- look c- can i guess right uh, uh, is it the last one no Oh, okay. All right. It's the huh. um, you know, I'll say it here. It's it's the free comic book day issue. Oh, okay. That's fair. that just that is absolutely fair. Um, is a like twelve page mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I guess let's get moving to some Twitter questions now. Uh, we're recording this on February eighth, twenty twenty three. Um, Twitter is broken at the moment, but we're lucky we got a fair few questions in before all of this happened. Um, so we mentioned Kian actually earlier in this episode, our good friend Kian. Uh, at Kian the Quark says, I imagine this will open a real Pandora's box. Uh, we do regularly unleash evil on this podcast. We do, so, we do. Yeah. But do we, are we um, ever able to put things back in the box is the question. That is the question. We still have our friend Jamie that goes on about the Bloodlines Omnibus from fucking like 20 odd episodes ago. <laughs> you know what? Look, if he keeps going on about it, it will eventually this will get it's, in the hands of Jim Lee. To, the three of us are going to manifest it into existence. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, Kean also says, also justice for Vibe. They should have used his true powers. Look, Vibe just gets completely overlooked in this whole story. And I uh, noted he was in it in my notes, um, mm-hmm. but I didn't really note anything that he had done yeah <laughs> that's valid um moving over to uh cyberbullying eggbot at um i don't know how to pronounce your at i apologize um but he, he actually just recently uh joined uh became a member on my coffee uh so thank you so much for that um he says thoughts on james gunn's plan uh which doesn't have much to do with this but hey it's a justice league question sort of um larger dc universe question um i'm excited for it uh, well, I, act- I i i really like pretty much the idea of all the projects i hope they get made um, yeah. And I hope um, they take the time. And I hope, and I, I don't think Gunn will do this. I hope the DCU is able to stay distinct from the MCU, mm-hmm. um, mainly in that it doesn't ever just sort of snowball into so many projects are being put into production and are rushed at, at so much time. 
I think Gunn uh, has learned from a lot of the mistakes of the MCU from working directly with them and uh, being executive producer on a fair few of their projects too. Um, so, uh, so I think, yeah, we'll see a clear distinction there. Um, I was actually going to try to do a video on the, on the James Gunn slate, but I, I was dead with COVID at the time. So I, I, I couldn't, um, there was yeah, a Twitter I do, thread. Which... I do. There is there is a Twitter thread. If Twitter's still alive when you're listening to this episode, go check that out. I gave some full thoughts on that, and uh, yeah, you can see them there. James Gunn is tapping into a lot of my personal favorite sides of the DC universe. So um, yeah, very excited for that stuff. Um, speaking of uh, Jamie, our friend Jamie at Jamie underscore season seven says, "Would it have been better if constant <laughs> if Constantine ranted about Tories for a bit?" I think yes. I agree. I think more writers who write for John Constantine should take some Jamie Delano notes and uh, just have demons worshiping Margaret Thatcher. Um, yeah, I, I think this sh- this should happen. And uh, yes, I, I agree. Jacob, any thoughts on this? As someone that's just been introduced to Constantine realistically, I mean, I from what I know about the famous writers of Constantine, I have to agree. Um, and I know about them politically. Also, you know. It would not only just be so cathartic to see, you know, Tories be be taken down. It would also make a certain side of the internet so pissed, and uh, that that. I don't anger... think that, I don't think those people worship John Constantine to begin with. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I feel like those people could make a mountain out of that molehill. Like mm-hmm. they easily could. Fair enough. Um, so. Uh... So uh, once again, because Twitter is down, pretty much dead for most people right now, um, we did get a question DM'd to us from our friend English Giraffe. He says, hi, my question for the Grid Trinity War is what do you think of Jeff Johns' surrealism in these two stories compared to other writers like Grant Morrison or Neil Gaiman? Jacob, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I'd argue that it's... I wouldn't, I'd argue that there isn't a whole lot of stuff, at least the stuff that Johns writes, that's all that surreal. Um... I think Johns is more trying to tap into a more mythic quality that I don't think he entirely understands. Mm. Um, Like, I I feel like this is very much a story where the classic Jeff Johns writing a blockbuster gets in the way of what could be really interesting. Um, I have a pretty big talking point about Jeff Johns' approach to this story overall that I don't think is really relevant until we get to, like, the last issue. So I'll talk about it extensively there. But um, but I think there is just a core problem with this story in Johns' writing, and uh, and I think we'll we'll get to that later on. Um, but yeah, so our last set of Twitter questions come from our friend Mason at the GD256. His first question is, what do you think of the art in this book? Uh, the covers look fantastic. Uh, they do look fantastic. I think the first one is done by Ivan Reese, and the second one is done by uh, uh, Jim Lee, um, and that being the covers of these two collected yes. editions. Um, the artwork inside the books, uh, also fantastic. There's a menagerie of fantastic artists. There's, working there's like books. a good 12 different pencilers. Yeah. Um, um and they're all they're all really great. They, they're all good at their jobs. Um, yeah, there are some standouts. Honestly, uh, Jesus Saiz, who um, does Justice League number eighteen, the first issue of the Grid. Mm-hmm. I love his style. Like it, it, that issue looks almost like a painted style, and it really works. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I desperately want to talk about Mikel Hannon, uh, yes. artist of the Justice League Dark stuff, and he did a lot of the Justice League Dark issues in the main run. Um, one of my favorite comic book artists of all time. I, I'm so glad that we're finally covering something of his, because he, he blows me away every single time. I think he, he just has such a visually distinct style from so many other artists. And, Is he uh, the one who did Tom King's Batman? Uh, he did a lot of Tom King's Batman, but Tom King Tom King's Batman was also publishing twice monthly, so there were a couple different artists working ah. on it. Um, but Mikhail Hannon did a lot of it, yes. I, you know, that explains why Tom King's Batman run is so long. Yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that, that's what a lot of early Rebirth titles did, is they made a lot of their big uh, titles t- uh, bi-monthly, uh, or not bi-monthly, um, twice-monthly. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so so they they pushed their, they, they made their output, like, that much l- larger. Um, and it, it, I don't think it strained a lot of creatives, because you could tell, like, you know, the writers working on those books had, you know, cared a lot about those characters. Um, but it definitely did make the fact that, like, you know, you, where, where you typically have runs where, like, you know, one artist does, like, every single issue, that, that was no longer possible with those titles. Um, well, you, you also, I'd argue for a, for a bi-monthly thing, it almost says the issue... Um, that Jeff Johns had during the new 52 is that he was spread very thin. Yeah. Like 
if you're if you're going to be publishing something bi-monthly, you're on that book. That's it. Don't don't be doing three other series. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, Mason's second question says, uh, "How does this rank with other New Fifty Two comics?" Um, I've read a lot more than you, so I really want to know your opinion on this. I guess. Oh, it's it, it's probably the weakest New Fifty Two thing we've read. Um, it's not bad, but it's it's just got some big structural issues where both volumes could be better. I think if if you restructure things. If you, if you reallocated some of the time to some other things and, and just made things flow nicer. Um, also, I I don't know. I don't love the title, Trinity War. I mean, it's clearly one of those things that's meant to have, like, multiple meanings. You know, you have the Trinity of Sin and you have the Trinity of Justice Leagues. And it's like, OK, I get I get what they're doing there. And yeah, it's yeah. focusing also on the Trinity of Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. You know, it's it, like... That's all it's meant to do, really. Yeah. Well, it has it has a it has a lot of meanings, but a lot of those meanings are um, really shallow, in my opinion. Like, I agree. Like there is there isn't a point really where all three parties are fighting each other. Like mm. y- y- for something called Trinity War, you would expect three distinct sides. Or what if it is the war between those three trinities, the leagues, the DC Trinity, and the Trinity of Sin? That's still it's that's, a, it's, a, it's a Trinity of Trinities, Jacob. Don't you see? It's very smart. Uh, no. <laughs> that's um, anyway. Mason's last question reads: Describe the comic with two words of alliteration, Jacob. Mason does not have free will when he replies to these things. He does. I, I didn't. Jacob. Jacob. I didn't, Jacob. I swear. Jacob, no, no, I no, 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 no. You, Jacob, you don't get to talk right now. You don't get to talk right now. Literally, when you finished reading the book, you messaged me and you were like, it is aggressively average. And one of Mason's examples here is aggressively, aggressively aver- average. Jacob. I promise you, I had absolutely nothing to do with this one. You there is me. no way. I, this has happened too many times for me to believe you right now, I, This time, I swear, for this specific one, I did not prompt him to ask anything. You're a goddamn liar and you know it. I also think I only said aggressively average to you in a DM. Yeah, which is why I don't believe you. I don't <laughs> No one else would know about this. I, look, I don't know where Mason got this idea. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Well, fine, Jacob. Uh, uh, describe it with two words of alliteration. I, mean, I want to say aggressively average. Say aggressively average, then. Go the fuck ahead. <laughs> aggressively average. Thank you. I don't have I, an almost, answer to this question. Almost I, I agonizingly was just off. average. I just don't have an answer to this question because I was too preoccupied by the fact that you put Mason up to this. I did! Jacob, nothing you can say will make me believe you. Literally nothing you can say. You have done this too many times. I I didn't. I didn't. I'm going to ask Mason if he's okay. I'm going to ask Mason to blink twice if he's okay. Send me a video of of you blinking twice, Mason. Please. I don't believe you, All I do is say, oh yeah, we're recording tonight. So, you know, go go flex your chaos. Mm -hmm. I do not give him prompts. Uh Uh-huh. Mostly. Uh Uh-huh. I know you have in the past, which is why I don't believe you. I have in the past. I didn't do it for this one. Because most of the conversation, we were discussing Mason's car troubles. Jacob, shut your goddamn mouth. Let's move into spoilers. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, we're moving into spoilers. Uh, Um, Before we move into spoilers, once again, if you'd like to see what we're doing next week, or next time, not next week, in two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, I know what time is. Um, (laughs) Go to the end of the episode. Uh, I know we're doing a it's a Batman episode. It's, it's, yeah, we're starting we're starting our next Batman block and our last Batman block for a very long time. Actually. Yes, that's so. which is interesting. Yeah, um, yeah I have so. I have some guesses as to what it is. Yes, um, one guess that I'm hoping and one that I'm a little nervous about. Uh, if not, I'm it could sure be something else entirely. You, you don't that. know that. I don't know that. No, you know I don't. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but down but yeah, so go to the, the end of the episode if you want to see what we're uh, see what we're doing next time. Um, as always, our link trees will be down in the description if you want to go follow us on various social media platforms and see what else we're up to. Um, and see uh, if if Twitter dies in between 
Uh, yeah, where, where that, that's the really trouble right this. now. That's the trouble right now because we have to record these so far in advance. Right now, is we don't know what the state of Twitter is going to be in a couple weeks' time. <laughs> I mean, so. let's be honest. Even if we were recording like normally, we wouldn't. We don't. We st- yeah, you're right. Yeah, we still wouldn't know. We um, don't know if Twitter's going to be there on mon- on the like Monday when the Shazam episode releases. Yeah, yeah. So who the hell knows what's going to happen? Uh, anyway, let's move into spoilers. The way we're doing this is uh, we're doing the first three issues of the Grid uh, trade collection, and then we're moving over to our Trinity War collection. I personally have a Justice League Dark Omnibus that I'll be reading Trinity War from for this. <laughs> so uh, I'm so curious, does it does it collect it like just 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 normally, just like a big section in the middle? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's just a regular part of the Omni. Yeah. That's 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 interesting. I think. Yeah. Which is which is pretty funny because because it, it goes directly into a Forever Evil tie-in event afterwards. <laughs> So oh, right, yeah. yeah, which includes even more Pandora issues. <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, and also it's just a great omnibus. If you haven't read Justice League Dark, please do. It's it's one of my favorite New Fifty Two titles. I I love it. Um, anyway, I guess let's get into this. Uh, we open on Justice League number eighteen. 18. Yeah. Um, okay. and so also, also, I'm assuming we're going to try to like go through these a bit faster than normal because we have like 15 issues to cover. Yeah, we have 15 issues to cover, and, and I think the bulk of it is is Trinity War. So this yeah. 18 is called The Grid. The um, Grid. Um, we have a great cover here, actually. I love the Cyborg cover. Yeah. I also just like seeing Cyborg get any sort of like highlight on these issue uh, issue covers. It's very nice. Yeah, you know what? With this cover, I thought, ooh, ooh. Are we actually going to get some stuff I mean, for Cyborg to it, do? And Cyborg being on the cover and it being called the Grid does also set up the end of Trinity War. So, so there is that. Yes, but uh, one of my you, issues with with Johns's run has been that after after Origin, Cyborg has been kind of sidelined. Yeah, I mean, he gets a bit more to do throughout these these two. Yeah, it's better here, but it's not it's not amazing. But that's also because you know when Trinity War happens. Everything is stuff. But we open with two teenagers. Yes, uh, Ronnie Raymond and Jason Rush, um, who are the new 52's Firestorm. Um, yes. Now, I'm pretty sure you know at least Ronnie, right? I, I know Firestorm is Ronnie Raymond and um, Martin Stein. Yes, um, yeah. Because um, of the Flash. They, they did so. on the CW shows, yeah. Yes. Um, now, I remember they did also swap out Martin with someone else or no, 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 they swapped out Ronnie with someone else at some point, but I don't, but I don't think it was I Jason, think. right? I don't remember. I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think they did Jason now. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so they are this, uh, the new 52, uh, firestorm. Uh, we see, a I bit will of them. say, I will say one thing in this issue in particular that John's excels at is throwing characters at you and characterizing them really well, really. Quickly. Yeah. And getting you to know them in like, just like a page's time, you know, um, you, like you just see these two for one page and uh, they get a contact, uh, they get a message from somebody, and then you move right over into Baltimore, where you catch up with uh, Black Canary. Black Canary. Um, I'm assuming, like, once again, CW leaves you somewhat familiar with uh, with Black Canary. And she did, uh, even, uh, so does uh, Batman the Brave and the Bold, honestly. Like, oh, that's right, she was not that, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't watch it often as a kid, but she's one of those characters that you kind of remember, just because of a really strong portrayal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mostly remember her in the in the Music Meister episode. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, she's fighting a uh, Copperhead, which I think is pretty fun. Um, and then uh, once again, much like Firestorm, uh, she gets a message from somebody on a giant over... fucking billboard that says "Hello, Black Canary." Um, we go we go over to San Francisco then, where Zatanna is do is performing a magic show. She goes backstage. She's talking to uh, John Constantine, which is just fun to have. Um, and she gets a message then from her phone, uh, telling telling her to hang up on him. Um, and then we move over to the Watchtower, uh, where yes. our Justice League now down to six members since uh, the exit of Hal Jordan in Throne of Atlantis, or no, before Throne of Atlantis. Um, end of <laughs> Villain's Journey. That's when it happened. Jeez. Yeah. Um, I, I I know my timelines. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so we're down to six members, and uh, and and much like the end of that story, uh, they they, they plan to expand uh, the Justice League. They want to invite new members into the league. I love. I will say, I love. I think is this the first time we've really really seen the Watchtower in? Uh, well, no, no, we had we had a couple scenes of Villain's Journey. I think up here. Yeah, but I, I love the way it's drawn here in particular. Like, 
Mm -hmm. There's something also landscape. Like we have this two page spread um, and we get some really nice play off of everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. the, there's this interesting idea of uh, Cyborg having to deal with all of just the information of just having the Internet in his head, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we establish, you know, the idea of the grid where he's tracking every superhuman on the planet. Um, which has some interesting implications that will get resolution at, by the end of Trinity War, kind of. Um, uh, sort of, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we sort of get there in the end, yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so we... Um, we uh, also just get some quippy banter between pretty much everyone. Oh, uh, yeah, like, I, I love this last little interaction between uh, between Barry and Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Very um, funny. Um, and Barry's like, it'll be fun. So, you know, we get this nice little glare from Batman and we invite our uh, potential Justice Leaguers onto the Watchtower. So, uh, so let's do a rundown here. Uh, Black Canary, you obviously know. Uh, Black Lightning, do you know Black Lightning at all? Black, Light Black Lightning I've heard of because of the show, um, but never really, you know, experienced anything. We got uh, some uh, some wild cards in here. Uh, Blue Devil. <laughs> who I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, Element Woman, you do know. Uh, you do who, know. Uh, who appeared in uh, Flashpoint, actually. Yes. Um, she was there, and also a very different version of her in Sandman. In the Sandman. <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, uh, she's here, and she has pretty much like, the same personality that she did in Flashpoint, and it's very fun. It's clear uh, she's one of John's babies. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, Firestorm, we already know. Uh, Gold Rush, another wild card in there. Who I've never heard of before this. Uh, and, course... and, and, and we got this other little like Z-lister here called Nightwing. Well, I've never heard of Nightwing. No, no, <laughs> no. Never. Um, Platinum. Did you ever hear of Platinum? That, that, that's something you might have heard of. I actually haven't. No. Mm, okay. Uh, Vixen, you obviously know. And uh, is a Tana as well. I, I also, I just love this page. Like, it's a two-page spread where you basically have all these little mini scenes going on between people. Mm -hmm. And it's just... And, and once again, it's just abundantly clear that Johns just loves these characters and loves writing for them. And can just give them quick characterization like mm -hmm. like, like you like understand who they are immediately um because this is this is sort of just an odd like this issue is the justice league auditions issue um yeah. and i kind of wish we had more time with it because I, I don't know i just like seeing superhero characters interacting and like yeah like yeah yeah action and, and telling the story but also just, just let your characters be characters, and you'll always have fun. Absolutely, like, yeah. Um, like not everything needs to be building to some giant event. Sometimes you can just have an issue of characters being allowed to decompress and like talk to each other. Um, which honestly might come into an issue. The issue that I have with the way Trinity War ends, like, mm. like it, it, it doesn't decompress. It just ramps. And yeah. then ramp some more. Yeah, this is probably about the calmest the next 15 issues get, is these first couple scenes here with the Justice League. Yes. Um, um, and I, I love, I love then, like, we have this first page of interactions, then we have just probably some of the most dialogue I've seen in a Jeff Johns comic. Right? But again, it's, it's because he loves these characters, and he, he wants you to know these characters immediately, you know? It's, uh, a, it's all really, like, amazing dialogue. Like... You, you have, you know, introductions. Like, you find out, you know, Dick doesn't actually want to be there. He's there because he thought it was going to be an emergency. Um, he's not going to join the Justice League. Um, you, you have, you know, Black Lightning and Blue Devil deciding, you know, this might, this might be cool. Zatanna being Zatanna. Platinum being an AI. Mm-hmm. Which, owned by the United States Army. Uh, Gold Rush hitting on Flash, which is probably one of the funniest interactions there. <laughs> I love that. Um, um, and, the, and like Flash calling her a gold digger. I, I think it's funny. One of them was like, you mean Gold Rush? You know, <laughs> just funny. Um, Element Woman interacting with Firestorm, which makes for some really uh, even more fun interactions later on in the in the in these couple issues here. Element Woman is a character who's almost too pure for this sinful world. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love her. Um, but then, uh, um, uh platinum. The pla oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, Platinum has this interesting breakdown of, you know, I don't want to be a soldier, so she attacks Firestorm, 
And Platinum going rogue is kind of the conflict we needed for this, really. Like, mm-hmm. it's a great idea. It lets some of the um, sort of new potential leaguers who, let's be honest, it, this, is a, this is a great idea since a lot of these characters are probably characters who, what what was this, 2013? The general uh, 20, audience. I think late 20, or no, probably early 2013, yeah. Yeah, so 2012, 2013, these are characters that the uh, that your general audience may not actually know very well. Um, mm-hmm. Like, because I can imagine people, like, just reading Justice League, right? Like, yeah. And not necessarily reading everything that, you know, that, that came with it. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's we're just reading the Justice League stuff. So it does a really good uh, job of running down their powers. This great, uh, you know, you know, this great idea of, of Platinum basically trying not to be destroyed, but basically being contained. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, you know, everyone gets a ch- really gets a chance to get get a hit off and get something um, interesting uh, until we get you know the day being saved by a new version of the Atom. Yes, um, um, who is incredibly fun. I love her scene. Oh, she honestly. is. She is like the standout character. Like I want more of her. Yeah. Um, if only Trinity War didn't end the way it did. Yeah. No, I don't like that twist. That's that's fair. That's like it's, I don't think it works structurally either. Because... I, I, I mean, I mean, we all love Ray Palmer, but like Rhonda Pineda, I think is how you pronounce yeah. her name. Um, she, I, she 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 has so much charisma. I just I, I love her character here. You, you get an idea of who she is. You know, she's young. She's got spunk, and then Trinity War happens, and stuff is revealed. Yeah. I like, mean, honestly, not that these three issues even really like you know lead you on too much as to what's going on with the atom um well they do set up one twist mm-hmm. the first so there are two twists with this character the first one i think is fascinating i think that's great it's yeah interesting it's also a twist that she could come back from and you know you could really grow a character from mm-hmm. the second while it is only an expansion of the first twist it doesn't quite sit right. I mean, obviously, more on that later. We'll talk well, about that. Well, I'd later. argue it undercut the first twist. We'll get to it when we get to it, but it's it's undercutting what the first twist does, um, and and it feels very much for shock value instead of being an interesting twist. Fair. Um, enough. But yeah. But we, anyway, we have um, we so have just established... decides their their three candidates that they're going to let into into the league: uh, the Atom, Element Woman, and Firestorm. Um, which, of course, Johns was going to include Element Woman in here. <laughs> Um, Honestly, great. I, I one of my one of the things that I've seen is I like to look at is just some covers of things, and I love the cover of like the original Justice League International, where it's all random characters. Like, like let the league expand beyond you know your standard your standard oh, roster. I, I adore that JLI team. I mean, I know I know you read their crossover in uh, in Suicide Squad, but like I, I just I adore that team. Oh, they're so and, in de- and and you know in Death of Superman, like mm-hmm. like let, let the Justice League not just be sort of the main seven let let it grow let it change let let authors play with random characters yeah um but anyway so then the watchtower receives a, a mysterious message which is a skull and crossbones and says have a nice day and uh and that's where we end off issue 18 we go into uh justice league 19 then um this one is drawn by ivan reese uh which is very nice to see back because I, yes. I know you're a big ivan reese fan um nice Something to see I, um Sorry. There's something when we opened with that I was not expecting. Yeah. And that's Jason Todd content. Yes. Um, really, really, really good Jason Todd, Jason Todd content. content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I love it so much. Um, it, it's just, you know, J- Jason just. <sighs> so this, so you know that Damian Wayne dies at some point in the New 52. They talk about that here briefly. Um, and, and I, uh, I knew it happened. Um basically around this time based on sort of the numbering of issues um, of when, you know, Batman was dealing, like the Batman book was dealing with it. So it it makes sense for it to come up here. Mm -hmm. I like, I like that Johns is staying aware of just the larger DC universe, like what's happening in other books. Yeah. Um, Um, But yeah, so Alfred and, and Jason are talking in the Batcave and, um, 
and they're, they're talking about Damien's death, and, and Jason's like, you know, this is different. Damien died. You know, that was Batman's son. I was just another Robin. Um, I just, oh, I love that. Just Jason. Jason hates himself so much, and it's just, oh, it's such a such a tortured character. I adore it. No, oh, and it, it's it's great. Anyway, um, Alfred uh, Alfred starts breaking down. Then it's a beautiful little scene. Um, and then, uh, and then Jason is attacked from behind by a mysterious figure, um, dressed in all black, with a with a with a electric electrifying gun, some kind uh, of thing. basically a taser gun. Taser, yeah. Um, um, and so uh, Alfred tries to fight him off, which is pretty great. Um, but you know, Alfred is no match. Um, this mysterious figure then uh, then you know fights fights off Alfred and Jason, uh, exits to a part of the cave, um, a secret part of the cave. It seems this. Uh, this compartment where he goes down these steps, um, goes to this computer, finds these cases with uh, all the Justice League member symbols on it. There's a Superman symbol, Wonder Woman symbol, and he opens up the Superman one. There's a green light, and well, it's Kryptonite, obviously. Obviously. And uh, yeah, we go over to Ken Doc then, right? We're in Ken Doc. Yes. Ken Doc? Oh, yes. oh no 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 not yet not yet. Uh, this is the uh, the virtual reality bit. Yes yes so. Uh, you know, are yeah. So there's you know some big fight against aliens who want to kill all humans, um, and you know we see we see the atom attacking, and it turns out it ends up turning out it's it's a video game, it's an MMORPG, yeah. which yeah, <laughs> you know, I. It's, uh, I love I lo- like which, which which she has to leave her RPG to go go for a Justice League meeting. I just I love that. <laughs> just a funny little bit. It's great. Um, and, and and like all her other players are like pissed at her because she has to leave early. Yeah, <laughs> just, and, and it, it seems like this, which make me annoyed for what actually happens with this character because like it, it sets her up as like er- an earnest college student who's going to be a superhero like. Give give this character her own book and let's explore this. Like it could be really fun. Yeah, you don't even need to necessarily change the twist. Just you need to expand on the character. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um but it, more on that later. Uh, God, in the people, that know, people that know this book must, must be really pissed though. We just keep alluding to that. Um. Anyway, uh, we go over to the Watchtower. Um. Uh, Rhonda joins Firestorm. Uh, they're the only two there. They're early for their meeting. Um, none of the other leaguers have arrived because everyone else now, is in Kandak. Yes, now we're in Kandak, and um, and uh, these uh, these people are being held hostage there. They are uh, they're, they're, uh, uh, then Wonder Woman and Superman arrive. They stop the they save these hostages. Um, and uh, I was curious what you made of the scene when you first saw it. Because first off, you know we're going to Kandak, which we we read about back in Shazam last episode. Yes. I find it really interesting. And I, honestly, I find the Clark and Diana relationship in both these books kind of interesting. Um, I know I have, I have, I have some issues with Diana's just plotline in general throughout Trinity War. Um, but I also have issues. I have issues with everyone's plotline in Trinity War. Trinity War is <laughs> an arc with so many problems. Stop um, alluding to Trinity War. <laughs> It's it's let's, hard let's, not to because I know I I know I agree it's hard to but I I just realized how how annoying that must be for people that like haven't read the book so I think we should should just should just keep moving on yeah um, um but I, I think this is interesting I think the the follow up is more interesting where like I, I I like I like the the way the Clark and Diana romance is played out even if I don't like the romance like just on principle um. Uh, especially later on, um, especially with sort of the wedge in the Trinity that it can cre- that it creates uh, mm-hmm. later on. Uh, um, Wait, also, especially... I just, just want to know what this fake beard on Clark here is is in Kandak, and then it's just gone. The next the next uh, scene with him, he, he found a mirror <laughs> and he shaved himself with his laser vision. Makes sense. Um, um, anyway, so back in the Batcave, uh, Bat, uh, Bruce is catching up with Jason, uh, and Cyborg and Aquaman join them. They find out uh, what's going in and Ken, going on in Kendak. Uh, again, really good Jason Todd cont- uh, content because yeah, yeah. I mean, if, again, if nothing else, Johns loves these characters and he wants you to know who they are. Um, um, great. I, I, I love that there's like actually a fatherly di- dynamic from Bruce here with mm-hmm. Jason. Um, yeah, yeah. Who um, you know. Deser- d- deserves d- deserves therapy. 
He needs therapy. <laughs> You need therapy and lots of it. Um, but moving on, we uh, we go back over to Ken Doc now, and again, uh, that that uh, Clark Diana relationship you were commenting on before um, is on full display here. And, uh, and, and Bruce, I, Bruce I and like I, I like the aspect of of Diana being a princess here, thinking she could you know save an entire country mm-hmm. and kind of rule it. Yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily my favorite characterization of Wonder Woman, but I I not get bad. it. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. Um, yeah, uh, um, yeah. Uh, Bruce does show up, and they have this, you know, very interesting uh, conversation. Yeah. Well, well, Bruce first off, uh, uh, you know, reprimands them for for going over here, you know, on their own, and and it's like, oh, it's just the two of us. Well, Bruce is like, no, but you're representing the Justice League right now. Like that's you know, when they see you, they see the Justice League, and they see you together. Um, uh, Bruce also makes it very apparent to the two of them that he is aware of their ongoing relationship, um, which is a plot line we haven't followed up on since, I think, the first couple issues of Throne of Atlantis, right? Right. It just hasn't come up. Um, yeah. I think it's actually something that's, something that's mostly explored, because I read the first couple issues of it, of the Superman Wonder Woman title by wow. Charles Soule, which is actually very good. I, I, I do think it's, it's very good. But anyway. Um, but I, what I find interesting... Is that Bruce doesn't sort of shame the relationship? No, no, he just um, like just be more careful about it because it, it it could very easily be played for you know for over the top <laughs> almost dumb drama. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but it isn't. Um, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's the bulk of the issue because we then go back to the Watchtower where Firestorm and the Atom are you know still searching for everyone. And the Watchtower is invaded by Despero, <laughs> who's a character I didn't really know. Um, um, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, and and also, he's, they, they, they do a brief version of like catching up on his history next issue, but uh, yeah, but he's not version. He, he's not used. I'd argue to maybe full. He's not really the focus of. of... Yeah, yeah, and he does just like. <laughs> I hate I hate using the phrase like oh he comes out of nowhere but he does kind of come out of nowhere doesn't he because yeah, well, he's like you know in this three part story arc we only introduce him at the end of the second issue yeah I mean it's, he's there because they need a villain to fight yeah, like, yeah. that's that's the point of this character um, mm-hmm. they need a villain to fight and they need it to be quick mm-hmm. um, but then we go into Justice League number twenty which opens on the best scene ever I just I fucking not. love this scene Elven woman so in her two face <laughs> car. <laughs> Because that's what that car is. It's a two-faced car with a little E symbol on the front. And she's getting fast food for the Justice League. Which, again, scenes like this, give me more of this, please. Yes. Do it. It's great. (laughs) I think, didn't we make the comparison back in uh, Flashpoint that she's kind of written like Delirium from the Sandman? Yes. Yes. She's written very much like Delirium from the Sandman. (laughs) Um, It's great. Anyway, so she gets a uh, big big belly burger and uh, two two big ass bags of it, and she goes up to the watchtower to find Despero attacking Firestorm and the Atom. And uh, this entire uh, issue is narrated by the Atom. Yes. Um, yeah. Which again is interesting for the twist coming up. Yeah. Um, uh, well, because this issue is called through. this issue is called Secrets, and it's all about sort of like this the, just the general secrets people carry. Um, it, it uh, the issue end uh, going a little ahead. The issue ends with the re- reveal of the secret that Batman has a plan to take down every Justice League member, um, which I think is obviously there's you know what there's the famous Tower of Babel story. There, yeah, but... it, it's it's just uh, a Jeff Johns version of that story. Yeah, Mainly... or, 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 I mean, well, again, that's that story isn't strictly about that, but like he's using that idea, that idea, and and, and kind of speed running that development. Probably for good reason, considering yeah. Trinity War is going to start in Trinity War is going to start in a month, and yeah, yeah. and, and you, you you've kind of already run out of time. Um, so yeah, so we're here. Uh, Element Woman has joined uh, Firestorm and the Atom, and they're fighting, trying to fight off Despero together. Um, big action sequence. That's about all. There's we a have bunch here. of artists on this issue, and it it gives it almost a cartoony look, which I really like. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, Despero's a very cartoony villain, so I think it sort of lends itself to that, it, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, it just it fits really nicely. And 
it's always nice to see some to, to just even for like if one issue is going to just be a completely different style, like make it stylistically interesting instead of um, doing sort of like the classic like pre I'd argue like pre nineties comic book thing of mm-hmm. sort of homogenizing the style. Yeah. Um, um, like, 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 sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just just go stylistic with it. Like, yeah, this one uses a bunch of onomatopoeia. It's, you know, it's 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 drawn interestingly, and it's very flashy with its colors. It's very nice to read. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we lead up to this bit where Despero like separates uh, Ronnie and Jason. Um, meanwhile, uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are, are are discussing once again the the whole Justice League situation. Um, when Cyborg alerts them of the issue at the Watchtower that Despero has 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 made his way onto there. Um, oh, we also, you know, we this is where we establish the Kryptonite, you know, the Kryptonite ring. The um, I believe what is it? The Batman Catwoman series calls it the Forever Rock. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's so good. I just, oh my god, I love that series so much. Er, Tom King, my love. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So yeah, we, well, we, uh, we, uh, we, Batman tells Clark and Diana that um, that the uh, kryptonite was stolen from there, um, and Diana freaks out, of course, because you know Batman was keeping kryptonite. But Clark also lets her know that you know I'm the one that gave it to him just in case, you know, which is which is always an aspect that I love about. Bruce and Clark's relationship. You know, it's all it's just an important aspect to the relationship anyways. Mm-hmm. And that it's not um, an antagonistic thing, you know? It it, yeah. it, it, it 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 is. It isn't, and it shouldn't be played that way. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so they're alerted to the situation on the watchtower. Despero has now done enough damage to the watchtower that it is uh now plummeting to Earth. to Earth. Um and, uh, and then out of nowhere. <laughs> uh the uh, Martian Manhunter. John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, arrives, and uh, is this our first full issue with with Martian Manhunter? Um, because he made a few small appearances. He's made cameos. Yeah, I I think it is. Yeah, I mean it's a fine appearance. You know, he fights off Despero. It's a cool it's a cool bit. Um, I love I love where, when like the fight eventually changes to like you know they're in this this sort of like mindscape of their own and uh and it's all like Jean Jones is making it's 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 a really badass sequence where he like becomes the dirt in the ground and he swallows Despero. It's, it's it a, also it's, makes the character terrifying. Like Oh yeah, and like it like people really underestimate this character. Like Jean Jones is one of the most powerful DC characters ever. And like people don't think about that often. <laughs> um yeah, it's great. Um, but anyway, Marsh Manager defeats Despero in the end. Superman, Superman restabilizes the Watchtower, um, and uh, and Jean tells the Atom to not tell anyone that he was here, that he was the one that defeated Despero in the end. Um, leading, of course, the Atom uh, to pretty much tell everyone that, oh yeah, well, I, I'm I'm the one that did it, <laughs> you know, um, which no one, of course, believes. But you know, more on that later. Um, yeah, I just we like also that, get the Kryptonite ring back. Yes, Despero had the kryptonite ring. Um, yeah, we take we it get off. this great scene in in the Batcave then, <laughs> with with Clark and Bruce. Bruce trusting Clark with the secret of, you know, here's, uh, you know, here are all my plans. He doesn't have a plan for Wonder Woman. Um, mm-hmm. His plan for Wonder Woman is Superman. Uh, he's the box, which is interesting. Um, I think it makes sense. It makes sense. It especially makes sense with what the new 52 is going for. Yeah. Um, with their relationship and it being a dangerous thing at the same time, you know, it's, I don't, again, I don't love the relationship, but I think for, for what it's working with it, you know, the, yeah. the runs I mean, feature make it work. And they do it better than other media that does the Clark and Diana relationship. I want to know what specifically you're referring to. Oh, you know. I don't. Well, you know, it shakes it is the not... earth. What? Dark Knight Strikes Again. Oh, 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 oh. See, you know, Jacob, I thought for a second I had successfully wiped that from my mind. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm not sorry. If I have to remember it. You have to remember it. You son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so we sort of wrap things up then. Um, uh, Every, uh, everyone sort of like questions the Adam like about what happened. Um, then uh, Clark and Bruce go down into the Bat Cave. Uh, oh yeah, we we already, you already mentioned that. Yes. But um, and then we catch up with Rhonda one last time. Uh, she goes back home, and uh, and she is talking to someone that is giving her orders. 
Um, this particular someone is Amanda Waller who, uh, and, and Steve Trevor, um, who have been running the Justice League of America this whole time. Um, again, something that I think you already knew about that, right? Because of Villain's yes. Journey. Yeah. Villain's Journey establishes it. Um, and this is the first twist. This twist, I think, really works. Um, mm-hmm. but, yeah, like, that she's spying on them for Amanda Waller. Um, and it feels like something Waller would do. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it fits in with the theme of secrets. Um, and, you know, we, we end we end the issue with this great, like, uh, you know, she gives them information about Firestorm. We have, and end this issue with, my name is Rhonda uh, Pineda, but they call me the Atom. And I'm the only one who knows a war is coming. Bum, bum, bum. We, I did not plan on us doing that at the same time. Anyway, um, but I guess that finishes off our grid reading. And um, the grid is fine. It's fine. I, yeah, yeah. I actually I mean, preferred... also to be fair. To be fair, for some reason, Justice League Volume Four: The Grid only collects chapters one and six of Trinity War, which is so fucking awful. It's that so, is such a yeah. terrible decision. Um, like, but whatever. Honestly, you know what they could have done? They could have made four and five Trinity War, right? This, yeah. This this could have been, you know, um, basically these three issues of, of of Justice League, and then like the first couple of issues of the Trinity War collection. Yeah. And then Volume Five could have been like the back half, or like like said the like the last seven or eight issues of the Trinity yeah. War collection. Because even just the Trinity War collection is a pretty big trade on its own. Like, you could have split that up and made it part of the grid collection and then made Trinity War its own volume. All right, so I guess it's time moving into Trinity War. I mean, hey, at least the free comic book day issue is short and we can just kind of short. We, we can fly right through this. Um, and it, I mean, it has so, some Jim Lee art. So keep in mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you're a right. Be- beautiful cover because Jim Lee and the later pages are great. Um, but uh, so this was the 2012 free comic book day issue. Which means it was like I think about a year before Trinity War even started. Which, I'm pretty sure. Like, okay, that baffles me from just like a marketing perspective, right? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, again, I I know I told you this before, but like, it's this is the thing that like they claimed like the entire New Fifty Two was meant to build up to was Trinity War, and it was a big deal. And if you're giving this issue out, you know, to, for free. You want people to know your story. Yeah, you want people to get into it. Um, and, and, and you know, he, he, here's the issue. Oh, you're into it. Well, then what? Like, within the next month, you should be continuing that story. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? Um, but no. Uh, no. In, in, instead, this came out about a year before uh, Trinity War even started. So the Shazam backups, I think, had only just started. So we didn't really know who the Wizard and everyone were yet, or at least not the New 52 version of these characters were. Um, and uh, and no one knew who Simon Vaz was, really, who gets a big tease at the end here. Um, but I, I don't know. Okay, here it is. You get the Trinity of Sins backstory. You get properly introduced to the three of them. Um, you've seen a few of them before. Uh, from yes. previous Justice League issues, uh, namely Pandora and the Phantom Stranger. Um, and uh, you knew of the question as a character, but you didn't know who he was, right? Yes. And I don't yeah. think, I'm guessing this is different from. This is this is not at all the typical character. No, <laughs> this is, Cause, cause this is very different. He, yeah. he has an identity. Like, yeah. His name is Vic Sage. Like, yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, this is very different, um, very different approach. Not one I'm a huge fan of, but the characterization is still relatively the same. Um, but moving on. Yeah. So we get their backstories. Um, these three apparently committed the first you know, and, and worst sins known to man. They they plunged man humanity into sin. And so these the, so the the Council of Wizards are 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 sentencing them to eternal torment. Um, and it's it's so weird, right? We we don't actually, like, get a real explanation as to what they did. Yeah, no, not not really. Um, I mean, we know what Pandora did. That's about it. Though. She opened a box. Yeah, which is, you know, I, again, Pandora directly drawing on on the actual myth of Pandora's Pandora. box. Um, 
you know, she opened the box. She she unleashed unleashed sin upon humanity, and that's that's terrible. And so she should be punished for eternity for it. Um, so yeah, that, that 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 that's all this is. And you know, we're tying Phantom Stranger and qu- the question, you know, pre existing DC characters into all this. Um, did you know either of them? I, I mean, we talked about the question already. Did you, did you know Phantom Stranger? I didn't really at all? know the Phantom Stranger. Oh, okay. Um, See, funny, funnily enough, I think my first introduction to Phantom Stranger as a character was the Constantine TV show because they do Jim Corrigan there. Or no, no, sorry, no, he's the Spectre. Sorry, wrong character. <laughs> Fuck. D- different character. Yeah, very it's... different character. Um, sorry, what was my actual introduction to Phantom Stranger? What was it? What I know it wasn't it a comic. This? I know it wasn't a comic. No. Did I like can't what it was any then. of the animated shows do it? Maybe. Fuck, now I'm drawing a blank. Well, never mind. Fuck me, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, so we get there, th- uh, the backstory of the Trinity of Sin, sort of. And like. And, go- and what? Like, like <laughs> the, the torments are like awful. Like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Phantom like- Stranger is now like an outsider. In the world, the question has his like identity just 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 removed. Yeah, he even he doesn't know who he is, and he has no face now. Um, and Pandora uh, is pretty much just sentenced to walk the earth as a mortal for forever um, because she opened the box. Yes, and um, so we go to the present day then. We go to Detroit, uh, into the Red Room once more uh, from previous issues, which is nice to see again. Um, and uh, um, is this, when is this, this is meant to be like like actual present, right? Uh, probably like present when the issue came out, like. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. So yeah. So um. So Silas and all of them are, 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 are I guess, running these experiments. Oh yeah, they're looking over into other universes. Um, and or, or sorry, one other universe. Um, they, they see a signal from another universe, which, um, you you, you see like different ish versions of characters that we would know mm-hmm. for a page, which. Uh, okay yeah like um we then go over to washington where uh amanda waller and steve trevor are talking and um and uh and 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 this this package came in for steve this morning with um the justice league uh gods among us book by uh by the bad guy from villain's journey which i think was actually meant to tease villain's journey at the time it would have had to have been because this yeah this was 2012. That is so weird. Oh my god. <laughs> you, you can um, see why this is my least favorite issue of the collection because it's like. Oh yeah, it's a fucking mess. Yeah. <laughs> um. So in it at Argus in the black room, a vault where there's a bunch of mystical and and evil artifacts. Pandora comes in and takes back her box. Mm-hmm. Uh, escapes as uh, I guess Steve is trying to chase her. Um, she gets out of there. She walks into this alley. She holds the box, which is not a box; it's a skull. It, it's a skull um, with, and, with uh, three eyes. Yeah, you know, playing on the third eye imagery. And then, bang! Jim Lee takes over, and we flash forward to the near future, um, where uh, where Batman is is with the, is with Pandora's box. He's being chased by these green chain constructs, which we, which we learn are are being constructed by not Hal Jordan, but Simon Baz, who is a Green Lantern that wasn't even a thing, I think, yet at the time. Um, uh, apparently, this was his first appearance. Yeah, yep, which is fucking insane. And and Simon Baz is, is honestly one of my favorite Green Lanterns. I love him. Um, but uh, but no, um, <laughs> this is just an odd introduction. Uh, it is a scene from later in Trinity War. It, but, it does come around, but oh yeah, the yeah. context is vastly different. Yeah, yeah, um, especially considering the the, the the art here literally lies to you um, by drawing Superman the way that he is. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I would argue probably because Trinity War hadn't actually been written yet. Oh yeah, I don't even think it was plotted out. Like, I mean, well, but here's the thing that they draw Shazam correctly then. 
Because he's in the All Black from later on. Yeah, so... Maybe Jon's knew where Shazam's plot was going, so could incorporate that? Um, yeah. Um, and it's a great... I mean, it's a four-page spread. It's fucking beautiful. Um, and it's just Superman wailing Simon Baz with a giant pillar thing, and that's the end. But, yeah, and we see... Also, you know, other, I mean, this is a weird Other heroes I fighting. Also... This, this is a you weird see a version of the Atom. What's up? You see a version of the Atom. Uh, oh, that's not Rhonda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <That's>... like. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this just further supports my theory that I'm going to talk about in our last issue of this episode. <laughs> um, but also, uh, this is going to be a weird comment, I know. But look at Cyborg's ass. Uh. I don't know. It's drawn as very round and human-like, and I feel like, you know, as a cyborg, he shouldn't have such a nice ass. I mean, I guess? Moving on. This, um, is, this is a very weird thing to bring up, Joey. I know it is. I just, I, I this is the first time I had noticed it, and I, it, it was unfortunately in the middle of a recording. Um, so, this is where I desperately hope that the Justice League Dark Omni doesn't order the issues any differently from your trade. Um, so next should be Pen- Trinity of Sin Pandora number one. Yes. Um, okay, good. Yes. Good. <laughs> um, also, great cover. I think Ryan Sook does the cover, right? Yeah, he's, uh, he's wonderful. So, I, I adore uh, his cover. my trade doesn't actually, my trade, for some reason, doesn't. It doesn't have the credits? It doesn't include the credits. Like, oh, that's it isn't the classic red bar along the top of the back page. Like, it, well, I mean, it doesn't have it like a few pages in, like with the title. Oh wait, no, it does. It does. Okay. It does. Right, okay, they keep those. Yeah, it's it's weird. I part of me wishes they they kept them both. Like, you kept the red bar just right on, so you could yeah. easily. I see. I mean, obviously, the Omni doesn't have that. Um, it just has a variant cover, which is very nice, actually. Um, yes. but yeah, Ryan Sook does the cover on this, and I just I love I love his artwork. Um, it, it honestly actually kind of oh, I, I've mistaken Ryan Sook's art with Mikhail Hannon a couple times. Um, but anyway, it's, it's very good art. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is kind of the actual the actual origin of Pandora. Yeah, and it's 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 really cool. This is one of the better issues of of the collection. I really this love is this, one. this is so interestingly in the Trinity of Sin issues is is where Pandora is actually characterized the best mm-hmm. because she's more a victim of her own circumstance by accident. Um, whereas the, the Trinity War issues, they characterize her more like an evil temptress. I don't think evil, but I mean. She's yeah, definitely they, she's definitely colder in those issues. She's she's colder and she's more like let's let's tempt everyone to open open my box because yeah, yeah um, and it I don't think it works. I think this issue really really does work. Um, mm-hmm. Like we we start in basically prehistory with you know a hunter gatherer society. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Pandora finds. Pandora's box, um, opens it and unleashes uh, some familiar faces for you. Uh, the seven, the deadly, seven sins. deadly sins. Yeah, which is which is I'm sure pretty cool to see for you. Um, considering I'm really glad we read Shazam when we did. Um, remember a while back I told you that I had to change the schedule for something that I hadn't realized before. Um, I originally had Shazam later in the uh, first fifty episode block, but I was like, Hopes. you know, we should. Do, I, but I was like, we should do it right before trinity war because i think that would be really cool um and i'm glad we did because uh I, I think this wouldn't have hit it as hard. makes it makes sense it, it makes it also kind of makes a nice two episode block to actually tell the story in yeah um, yeah with the connections um, i mean like it doesn't really like change the way you would read this story but like it, it's like oh cool I, I know those characters like we can we can sort of like move it forward without introductions i guess yes um but yeah so she unleashes the seven deadly sins um they call her mother because she is the one that uh, that, that brought them out and made them become things. Um, and that's, I think, really interesting with the way the sins are characterized throughout all of this. Um, mm-hmm. Is that they they they're looking for the approval of this this woman who wants them destroyed, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, like yeah. And she immediately like rejects them. She's like, "I'm not your mother," or whatever. Um, 
and uh, and then we get her. Side. So this brings us into like you know where she sat, dur- you know, in that free comic book day issue. Um, this is where she gets dragged into all that, and she gets sentenced to her eternal torment. Um, she's then taken back to where she was before, um, and the kid has died. Right, the kid. Is yeah, that her the, the kid? that's kid's not her. Died, kid, and right? she has to. She or, has oh, to no, that's be- right. Her entire her entire village has died. Yeah, so um, they're all dead. She, she has to all of them. Um, and uh, and pretty much that she just continues to live her life haunted by what she has unleashed. Um, uh, she sees the sin's influence on the world, like, like, um, like, like sp- specifically with oddly biblical imagery in a lot of these cases. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, it, it works for you know the idea of the seven deadly sins. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's certainly a thing, and you know the idea is that she's alone. Um, she has, um, you know, she has this great moment, um, with, with pride where she rebukes pride, calling her mother, um, and pride kind of acts almost as a parallel to Pandora as a character. Um, Mm. uh, we, we, we we probably should have mentioned this issue. This issue isn't written by Jeff Johns. It's, it's written by. No, no. Uh, I mean, honestly, a fair, few, fair bit of Trinity War is not written by Jeff Johns. Um, and this is by uh, Ray Fox, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ray, Ray Fox is a lot of it, actually. And I think he's probably the best writer on this collection. Yeah, he, he, he works with the mo- most interesting material, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Um, and he makes, you know, makes these issues. Parallels, and we're basically seeing history move on of. Pandora trying to save humanity, but, but but kind of just constantly failing because she's going against a primordial force. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and you you get the implication that she did time to better herself. Um, mm-hmm. We uh, eventually get this uh, this scene uh, where she uh, she comes across Vandal Savage, um, who I think is a character you know, right? A character I know of. I know he's you know an evil immortal. Well, did uh, he, has he popped up in anything we've, we've read? He has I, not. Uh, oh. Well, no, he was. Alluded to in Endgame. That's right. Yes, but he hasn't like actually shown up. Yeah. Um. Again, this is a weird book because it's a lot of firsts. Because yeah, yeah, for such a big story. Um, and honestly, I don't even think reading the other two Justice League books leading up to this would have helped that experience much. Because again, like the Trinity of Sin was pretty much introduced in the story that is the culmination of their story. Of their story. I mean. It, honestly, it it doesn't feel like other the than the, other than the fact that apparently other than the fact that apparently Phantom Stranger was eleven issues in already at this point. I've never read the full Phantom Stranger run um, from the fifty two, but like I don't know what it was ten issues before this. I'm uh, I'm also just curious because it if this is what the new fifty two as a as like an initiative was building towards, it doesn't feel like there's been really any like. Build oh, no. up to the event. It was not. No, it wasn't super well planned out. No, but, I'd argue it wasn't planned at well, all. Uh, uh, I mean, if nothing else, you know, you you have the tease in Justice League Origin where you know that you teases know. enough of we have a character called Pandora with a design. Doesn't Phantom Stranger pop up there too? And, 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 the, fa- and the, the Phantom Stranger does pop up. Yeah, but like connection to the Phantom Stranger, they. They, they don't really, you know, make the idea of, oh, we actually have an idea of where the story is going. We just have a couple of characters that the story is going to involve somehow, mm-hmm. um, which is which is interesting because you see Pandora then bettering herself. Um, you see her working, um, you know, working in the present day um, in, in, in Aleppo, Syria in, in 2013, where... She's, you know, getting weapons from the sky, um, mm-hmm. being a- attacked uh, by Wrath, and she just she wants to you know, try and kill Wrath. Yeah, and eventually uh, she comes across uh, the, uh, the wizard then from Shazam, um, who I guess this is meant to be during Shazam actually, because um, he's still slowly dying at this point, um, <clears throat> and then he's uh, he's sent back then to uh, I to, guess to to, to die. Yeah, um, which, is, which, is where, says, which is where Black Adam then sees him in, in the Shazam backups that we read. So we basically <clears> find <throat> out that, like, you know, it's like, ah, we didn't create the box, but, you know, only the power within can end the curse. 
He goes back to die. Pandora drops her guns and is like, well, I need to find Superman to end the curse. Yes. Because he's uh, the strongest of parts, which, interesting, great ending, great sort of uh, lead-in. Because that that, that is our lead-in. Yes, uh, we then go into Justice League number 22, uh, which is the first actual chapter of Trinity Trinity War. War. So... Madam Xanadu, let's talk about this character, uh, who, I'm, again, I'm assuming you didn't know anything about, right? Uh, well, she has shown up before. Um, she showed up in Suicide Squad for that is That is correct. Moment. That is correct. Um, obviously, ability to tell the future. Um, you know, I love this aesthetic of her work, just having this, having this, uh, this, this, you know, sort of like shop, um, and, you know, be in New York City where, you know, this, this blonde woman finds her in the rain. She's monologuing about Jean Zatara being taught, you know, taught about, you know, the life we choose, <clears throat> the fact that we're open. And she's going to tell this woman her fortune. Um, and this fortune is, is going to be basically the fortune of... Of basically the new fifty two. This woman, you know, has this nightmare of of being waking up in her bed covered in gasoline and someone's gonna do something terrible. Um and then she's terrified and and, and Xanadu sees the future of um a city in ruins with presumably uh the Trinity. Of yes, the DC uh, universe. Yeah, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman standing above it, or flying above it, I guess, except for Batman. Um, she then flips over uh, a card revealing the boy, which is uh, Billy Shazam. Batman, Shazam. Uh, we then go over and see what he's up to, which is a nice little, again, tie into... Uh... It's a nice little character moment. I, I like some of these little character moments where, where you get to see, you know, Billy realizing, holy shit, I accidentally killed a man. Yeah, yeah. Um, despite the fact that, 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 like, that was his plan, he was, he, you know, he was trying to get Black Adam to change back, but, uh, so that he would, like, wither, but, you know, th- th- those, those implications are setting in with him, and, uh... And he's like, well, I, I want to give him at least a good burial. Um, yeah. Um, and so, uh, so he decides to take, uh, Black Adam's ashes out to Kendok to, um, to, to leave them there. Uh, we then go over back to um, uh, Xanadu, who pulls out two cards uh, called the Warrior and the Hero, which are Superman and Wonder Woman. Well, Wonder Woman and Superman. I said those the other, the other way around. Um, and uh, we catch up with them. And we get the scene. I got to talk about the scene because this is the Twitter moment. This is the Twitter. I'm assuming you've seen this panel before. I hadn't actually. Really? This is the fucking Twitter moment of, the, of this of this comic. Um, so Clark and Diana are talking. Clark says, um... Uh, We'll skip down to this point. Uh, when Hal shows up on Earth again, he'll ask him to transfer Despero to Oa. Uh, Diana says, but he'll eventually escape. There's a reason I don't have a list of villains as long as Bruce's, Barry's, or even yours. When I deal with them, I deal with them. So this has long been... Uh, this is a, a, a long-debated scene from this comic um, about what what this what this moment means. And all you really need to do is just sort of keep reading, because this panel often gets taken out of context. Um, and I and can Clark... imagine that. I still don't love the characterization, even in the context. I think it's a bit... It's certainly much better than a lot of people try to make it seem, though. Cause it's Clark not, like, says, irreparable. Clark then says, like, oh, yeah, I trust you're not talking about killing them, Diana. And Diana's like, well, only if it comes to that. And it's like, well, that okay, yeah, again, we've seen Diana kill her enemies before, if it comes to that. Like, yeah, I, I I argue the characterization... So so the characterization of Wonder Woman that I particularly love, especially since we've read the stuff from Perez's run, is the way Perez um, characterizes her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think John's in a way, kind of lacks that spark just a little bit. Like, mm. he, he, d- he definitely leans more into the warrior side of it all. Yeah, but, and um, I, 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 I don't think it's necessarily bad. It, it's just not necessarily my taste, and... and that's fine. I, I also just... I don't love a lot of what Diana does in this, but I also don't love what a lot of our characters do in this. It, it gets messy. Like, I, uh, there are bits where I definitely understand her action, and it makes sense, and it's great, but it kind of gets lost in the shuffle as the event goes on. Like, I gotcha. it's 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 this event is about to get messy. 
like yeah. um when pandora shows up and uh and xanadu op- uh, flips over her next card and it says the hostage and it's a picture of pandora um and uh and she, she 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 talks to uh, uh diana and clark there for a moment I, uh, I like diana's skepticism it's like if if the gods sent you like that's it's like that's that's crazy pandora explains herself um you know, we have this whole idea of, you know, hum- because of me, hum- humans have the capacity for evil. But with your help, I can forever eradicate evil. Um, again, playing on this idea of evil being, like, a physical thing to eradicate. Mm-hmm. That, like, it isn't really? Like, it's not, like, a physical thing. You just, like, destroying it will work. And I don't know if that's what John's is, like, John's is kind of going for it, but also... Like many things, it gets lost in the upcoming shuffle. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, which gets further shuffled because we go over to Washington where uh, Amanda and Steve are talking uh, about their JLA lineup. Uh, they talk about um, recently adding uh, Dr. Light to the team. Um, Who and uh, I know as a villain. Yes, um, the but there are also things. multiple Dr. Lights. Yeah, but, but this one's like an ex-villain. There was, um, a, I mean, did, didn't we also read a version of Doctor Light that was part of the Justice League? I think so. Back in Teen Titans. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah. So yeah, we, we've seen multiple Doctor Lights before. Um, but this he, one is specifically a villain, and that's, or specifically was a villain. That, that's which is going to be important. Yeah. For what um, happens, uh, Xanadu pulls the politician and the soldier. Okay. I don't love the way Waller's characterized here. Like, like, John's... It I mean, especially like John's, considering we, we just recently read Ostrander's Waller. Yeah. Fucking We're, perfect. Um, I, I th- th- this does kind of sting to see. like, clever and making her really smart. Yeah. And for some will, bits of it, she is, but sometimes she's just, like... I will she, say, I much prefer New 52 Waller when she's being characterized with the squad rather than with the JLA. Um... Because she's not bad there. I mean, again, nothing compares to Ostrander's Waller, but um, but I do prefer her in Adam Glass's Suicide Squad, uh, to this at least. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we see uh, we catch back up with uh, uh, Batman. Yes, and Sanity's and card is uh, the detective, which I love. I love the way that, that card is drawn too. Um, but yeah, we um we see uh that the uh, the watchtower ha- uh, they're, they're they're cleaning up the wreckage from that uh that plummeted last issue or not uh last time on justice league well actually i guess two issues ago on justice league because yeah, there's cause... Shazam issue in between <laughs> um but anyway uh yeah we, we uh for those that hadn't read justice league i suppose you know it catches up on what happened with the atom and martian manhunter and despro and all that um we uh uh, we uh, we then go back back over to Clark, Diana, and Pandora. Uh, Superman touches Pandora's box and it begins glowing and starts fucking with Superman and makes him presumably evil. Um, but more on that soon. And turns him pale white. Also, they find a random chess set in 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 the wreckage with <laughs> figures of the Justice League. Which um, does that get followed up on? Like, uh, I'm not sure. It's just kind of a detail here that, like, gets dropped. I can't remember if it's brought up again, honestly. I don't I don't think it is. Hmm. Um, How about that? <laughs> yeah, but, but Superman turns pale. His, his suit becomes black. And it's like, oh, no, there may actually be evil in Superman. There's, he's more human than I realized. Obviously, I think, again, the idea Johns is going for is there isn't a physical thing as evil. No one is purely good picking yeah, up on the Shazam just, theme. The is just literally making evil out of Superman. Um, and, 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 yeah. and Diana gets the box away from him. And we don't really have any time to, like, really follow that up because someone's flying to, Ka- to Kondak and it's Shazam. So we have to get there. Also... The Justice League of America is is going to Kondak because Waller wants to confront the regular Justice League. Yes. Uh, because she's afraid they're going to be too powerful mm-hmm. and go rogue, which, like, I, as a motivation, I get it. I find it interesting also, then, that Xanadu pulls the alien card, then. as And, like, 
I don't know. I don't think I'd call Marshall Manhunter one of the key players here. <laughs> um, uh, not really. Like, no, yeah. he's, he's, he's kind of... Like, like, his relationship with the Justice League and JLA is strained, but that's about it. It's about like, it. He has some great moments, but he's oh, not yeah. like... Yeah, he's not necessarily integral. I'm glad the DC animated movie universe didn't try to adapt this. Oh, oh fuck! Because, yeah. could you, oh, could you imagine? <laughs> it would be such a mess. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, we go over to uh, Can Doc. Then uh, Billy is about to uh, to spread uh, Black Adam's ashes across Can Doc uh, when he is uh, met then by uh, a, a a powerful force. Yeah, uh, this force is Superman. And um, and the rest of the just oh no sorry the military arrives first, shoots um, him he gets annoyed, and then Superman attacks him. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know uh, who's asking for right? No one wants one. You shouldn't have started. He punches Superman. Superman, I just knocked down Superman. I just knocked down Superman. <laughs> I love the little dumbass Billy Batson moment there. It's so great. Um, but yeah, uh, fight breaks out between uh, uh, Clark and Billy. Um, the rest of the Justice League then arrives. Um, uh, plus Satana, <laughs> which is interesting. Plus um, Satana, yeah. Um, <laughs> she's not actually part of the of the Justice League at that point. Um, but then the Justice, Justice League is met by the JLA, who all arrive here. Um, any characters you don't know in this lineup? Uh, not like so I got know. Cat, you got Catwoman, Doctor Light, Steve, Martian Manhunter, Simon Baz. Well, I guess you don't know Simon, obviously. I know, yeah. Uh, but Star Five, Girl, I've heard. I know of. you know of Star Girl. Um, Katana, Katana. Uh, Hawkman, and Vibe. I guess you know all of them, don't you? I know Which all of a, them. Yeah, pretty But nice. none of them, real, no, they don't get that much time to shine because... No. There are actually some nice moments between Bruce and Selina coming up here. Those are great. Yeah, I really John's like John's the bat cat shipper, obviously. Yeah, um, I mean, as everyone should be. Um, except, you and know... Then, uh, uh, Xanadu pulls her next card then, uh, which is the unknown, where with with the question, who's not actually become going to become important for like another issue yet, um, um, but just setting him up, I guess. Uh, as all so, this is happening, oh sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so the end of this issue is 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 messy. It's very messy. It's but but again, lot- it's it's John's typical like blockbuster approach where he's like just let's int- let's pose a ton of fucking questions and get people wanting to buy more. Um, and I mean, hey, it works. It makes you want answers. So, so you know, yeah, even if those answers successful. aren't all satisfying. Um, so, okay. So let's 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 sort of just go through this beat by beat. The, yeah, this is the moment. Um, so first, Xanadu pulls, you know, uh, another card is basically, you know, will you tell me what you see? We see a mysterious figure pinning evil to a board, doing a conspiracy board. I I think it's the question. Is this the question? Yes, yeah, it's the question. Yep. It's the question. Okay. We also have a silhouetted figure saying Pandora's finally out in the open. Pandora trying to find a box. The Phantom Stranger's going to get involved. The question is looking for an answer. Something called the Society is finding things. The Phantom Stranger's like, oh, no. The question, who has, who has the board? <laughs> who is the evil behind the evil? And then... And, Everything's going I, to Superman for some reason. Um, and then it's like someone just shouts, you know, we all need to stop in contact. Dr. Light turns white. Superman attacks him. And, and then fucking murders him. And, and like. And so we're in that aftermath. The question is, you know, who's trying to impute the, the Man of Steel? The woman reveals with Xanadu reveals herself to be plastique and she blows everything up. The yes. Adam is shouting, Stop. Which again is pretty funny to have plastique here since we just read Suicide Squad recently. Yeah. Um, um and but yeah. Uh yeah, the uh, the Adam is there yelling stop, um, trying to appeal to Martian Manhunter in particular, because they know each other. Fighting um, immediately breaks out. Xanadu's mm-hmm. shop is in ruins, and we see just burning cards of all our characters, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah. Um, and um, then mysterious suited figure going, ha, thanks to me, everyone will actually believe that Superman killed Dr. Light. And by the time the Justice League figures out what I'm up to, the world will already belong to us with a card of the outsider. And that's the issue. That is and it. <laughs> it's a lot. It's it a lot. Yeah. Almost too much. 
Very much so. Nice. Um, it kind of starts to slow down just a tiny bit next issue. Just a um, bit. Um, we go into uh, JLA number six. Um, and uh, and we, we, we see the outsider here, as he is known for now, uh, putting together a, uh, a team called the Society. Which is made yes. up of uh, a bunch of villains, uh, some of which we know here. Some of which we um, know. Um, as, uh, picking up on the threads from the end of... No. From the end of Throne of Atlantis, the trade, but technically from, like, Justice League issue... Like, issue, like, 14, I believe? Like... Yeah. Which, yeah, which again, I mean, you know, just, you know, continually reinforcing that idea that, you know, this is the thing that it's all been building up to. Um when like there are some issues with that <laughs> um but yeah uh jeff johns is uh co-writing this one with jeff lemire um and also doug mank is on, is on the pencils which is very nice yes to see. it's very good art the art in this book is is, is impeccable like it's it's, a, it's oh. all a treat for the eyes yeah um, i still do not get why zatanna is part of the justice league lineup here <laughs> because she, apparently like she's kicked out of justice league dark at the time but they wanted her in the event i'm guessing so oh. See, it's funny because I've read through this omnibus straight, and um, and I'm pretty sure Zatanna was still part of the team at the time. <laughs> I think I'll make sure. I can literally look back right now. Oh yeah, I guess she wasn't like part of the main team at the time. So oh, yeah. like, they want her here. It's a thing. We get this great page where the title page happens, where you see all of our characters in profile. Yeah. I like the little X across the Doctor Light one. Yes. Um, um, a little gag there. So, you know, it's like, okay. Did you ever see any, any of those old Justice League of America covers from, like, the 70s that, like, had the lineup of characters on the side so you knew who was a part of the team in that issue? And they're, like, in stars sometimes. Yeah. 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 I have a couple of those issues. They're cool. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so we, uh, we uh, fight breaks out among everybody here. Um, and it's uh, pandemonium, and Clark is the one to bring everyone together to be, like, you know, Everyone get away from me. Like, he can't control himself. Martian Manhunter seems to actually want to help and mm-hmm. be caring. Um, yeah. But, you know, the there's just there's just a lot of fighting with the characters. Like, Vibe disables the Flash. Bruce grabs Selina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're going to work together to s- just stop this mess. Um for a second until superman says stop this stop this right now and lock, lock me, me up and um, then, and then a, we go I, vertical I for a page spread. what's up uh, we go vertical for the spread basically yeah it, oh it's such a nice spread i love or, it well i mean okay the text is or yeah the, the text is the right direction but the the the, the art itself is vertical it's and, i mean it's a great way of portraying the pandemonium mm-hmm. of the situation yeah um, but yeah, so uh, Superman uh, sort of like subdues himself. You know, he stops the fighting. Um, he, you know, uh, Steve says we're going to bring in Superman. Uh, Steve talks to Amanda Waller then about what happened out there. Even Waller um, doesn't believe that Superman killed Doctor Light entirely because it's like, okay. What I love is that Johns isn't really playing with Superman going evil. The the, the thrust of this is. What the hell's going on? Why did how did Doctor Light actually die? Um, mm-hmm. And what does Pandora's box have to do with it? Those are our if those are our two biggest plot threads, the most important plot threads, and the ones that I argue should be the focus of everything, even though they're not entirely the focus yeah. of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the two teams sort of like have has some fun interactions here. Um, uh, namely, of course, Diana meets up with Steve Trevor, and there's some tension between them. Um, and uh, and then we go over into where Superman is being held. He's in this chair with. I'm I'm assuming he's 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 uh, restrained by lead. I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, uh, that's that's the implication. At least that know. he like can't see through that little visor thing on his head. Um, uh, Bat- and Batman he's been is there coughing. To him. Sorry, go ahead. Well, he's also been coughing. He's been yeah. nonstop coughing, and he feels sick, which is. Again, another interesting question. Um, but he wants to know who was the man that he killed. Yeah, and, and it's a know. great, it's a really great moment because um, you can see how tortured Clark is by this. Um, and Batman, you know, delivers just some very like matter of fact facts about you know the Arthur Light and who he was. And all Clark wants to know is, did he have a family? You know, 
um Bruce and, says yes and Clark is just so pissed at that. I just oh I love it. It's such a good moment. Um really great stuff. Anyway, so Diana comes in um uh trying to comfort Clark of course during all this. Uh eventually coming to the conclusion that uh this is all the box's fault. So Diana goes over to um I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Themyscira. I've read a fair bit of Brian Azzarello's Wonder Woman run, and I think that's where this is supposed to be. It has to, wherever the gods are, because this is Hephaestus, you yeah. know, the um, god of blacksmiths. And we, we keep getting question narration, which I actually really like. The questions, all three members of the Trinity of Sin are really interesting. Yeah, like, oh, totally, yeah. Like, surprisingly so. Yeah. Uh, despite not amounting to, you know, the best conclusion to the arc, they're really interesting characters and they're played really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the question narration in this issue, especially because you don't know where he is among these characters until the end. Yeah. You really don't know where he's, and he's there the whole time. Like, I, I love that. Oh, you so also good. don't necessarily know where he stands for the longest time throughout all of this. Like it becomes quickly apparent when Pandora and the phantom stranger really enter the picture where their allegiances lie. Pandora mm-hmm. already has the phantom stranger. It will, yeah. But the question is sort of the outlier of you don't know if he's going to be a hero through all of this. Yeah. Uh, um, but Diana with uh, Hephaestus learns that uh, Hephaestus has not actually forged the Pandora's box, even though everybody believed that to be the case. Nobody knows where the box came from. Um, and so Diana is out, goes out to find out. Um, and so I, what is the exact reason she goes to, to the Justice League Dark? Um. It's because John Constantine would know? Is Oh, okay. I do like this bit of narration that sort of explains it. Uh, where does a demigod turn when both myth and science fail her? Um, so she turns to magic, I guess, is the point. Um, yeah, so she's, uh, she's searching out Constantine. Yeah. And, so, and this is where we have the Justice League Dark. So the Justice League Dark enters the picture. We have John Constantine. We have Dead Man. Did you know Dead Man at all? I did not. I adore Boston Brand. Um, the idea that he was part of a a very old version of the Flying Graysons, and he died during a trapeze act. Um, oh, and and he he just he's just still around, and he he's, he's got just this, he's and he's kind of a funny character too. He's got the, like this funny Boston accent, and it's it's cool. I just I love him. He's great, but he's also um, dead. Yes, uh, DC's version of Frankenstein is here. Uh, who I'm sure you mostly just know in passing, right? Well, I, I have read the novel Frankenstein. Well, no, no, no. But DC's Frankenstein is a very different thing. <laughs> yes, but I have, but my brain is still reading the novel, thinking the novel Frankenstein. Well, I would imagine, yeah. Uh, and and then, then, interestingly, Black Orchid, Orchid is here, who you do know from Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And of course, um, Constantine, who, such a bastard, and we love him. Oh, we oh, love him. He's so good. Um, but anyway, we go back over to Argus headquarters. Um, Steve Trevor goes in to visit Superman. He takes the lead visor off his head, and we find out that Steve Trevor was the question the whole time, or at least for a significant portion of this issue. Um, and uh, and that's where issue two ends. It's not actually clear where where the question is and where Steve is, because the scene with Steve and Waller is implied to be actual Steve and Waller, um, mm-hmm. right? So this I believe is just, so. The question has just been there the whole time, hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Cool moment. I like it. Uh, we then go into Justice League Dark 22. Um, now, this is the big one. And I'm pretty much just going to spend this whole segment talking about Mikhail Hannon because, God, his art is so gorgeous. I adore it. Oh, it's beautiful. Even right from this first page, which is, it doesn't even get much of a chance to show off his artwork. No, it's, it's a beautiful it's just, page. It's, it's Madame Xanadu captured. Also, this is the this is our first issue of like an actual chapter of Trinity War that doesn't have Jeff Johns's name on it. Yes, yeah, this is uh, uh, written by Jeff Lemire, um, who obviously co-wrote the JLA stuff with him. Um, do you know Jeff Lemire's name from anything else? Uh, he did a backup in in um, was it Court of Owls or was it Death of the Family? I think Death of the Family. Yeah, because he, he did one. He did some of the backups there. That sounds um, right. Um, I love his Animal Man run. He did a new 50, new fifty two Animal Man run, which is fantastic. Um, he wrote that newer Robin and Batman miniseries, which I thought that was I know you good. loved. Yeah, I thought um, it was very good. And um, and he's currently writing Swamp Thing Green Hell, which has is finally coming out with its second issue soon. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's a whole story. I'll tell you after the recording. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so he's a very good writer, um, and uh, he's on these issues, and he's 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 great. I love him. Um, so we see the our mysterious suited figure talking about the Xanadu. outsider. Yes, um, uh, the outsider is talking to Xanadu, and Xanadu is um, just out of the story. She's basically been damseled because. You See, can't I have a clairvoyant. I think in order to be damseled, someone needs to be aware of her capture. <laughs> I mean, the audience is aware. We are aware. So we nobody's have... out to try to save her, though. You know, they are out to find her. Only because nobody quickly. knows where she is. They don't know she's been captured. Right. I mean, they have to expect foul play because they were investigating her, her her shop being blown blown up last issue. True. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, now, this is that... just a tease of the outsider is doing things and, and, and moving pieces on a chessboard. Ooh, what could that mean? <laughs> and now we have um, a really interesting plot point. Which doesn't get enough time to shine, I think. It yeah, really uh, doesn't. Waller wants Firestorm to create uh, artificial kryptonite, pretty much. Um, and, and he and manages. He's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> that's that's like all the time it gets this issue. Um, anyway, we go over to um, a small team of people working with Trevor who are investigating uh, uh, Doctor Light's body. Um, uh, they are then visited by the one and only the Phantom Stranger, um, who just oh, again I just I adore Mikhail Hannon so much. I love this full page that it's, where he first introduces the art Phantom is Stranger. great. Like oh, he's so I'm, good. Knowing that he's, I, I, this makes me more excited to read King's Batman run just to see more of this man's art. Oh, like, he's, he's fucking brilliant. And he does a lot of the the Bruce Catwoman issues. Um, and like just the way he draws the two of them together. Oh, it's fucking beautiful. Um, anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so Phantom Stranger is there. He delivers a warning uh, about what's going on with Superman. Um, everyone quickly goes to investigate as uh as we see that superman is his skin is changing color it's like crackling almost um, he's getting sick and he's dying um and god i love to kill off superman on this podcast you do you do <laughs> this is the third time it's happened except he doesn't actually die by the end of this one so that's no nice. but this, this it's a genuine threat yeah um yeah so yeah, the cyborg figures that oh shoot, Tre- Colonel Trevor's with him now. It's like that's that's not possible. Quick, we need to get down here. And Superman breaks out, break is breaking himself out. That's that. It's fight on pause. But we go back to Diana and the Justice League Dark. Um, and uh, Pandora joins them again. <laughs> or oh no, no, she doesn't. Wait, what is she doing there? Oh, oh, she's observing. Oh, so nobody knows that she's there. That yeah, nobody sense. knows that she's there. Wonder Woman wants to try to find her to figure out, because the box, she thinks the box is what's corrupted Superman. There's something though... beautiful, there's something truly beautiful, beautiful about the panel where Diana uh, puts Constantine into a chokehold. <laughs> and, and just lifts him off the ground. It's you just great. feel like he deserves it. You don't even know what he's done yet. He just deserves it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Because immediately before that, Constantine is is, is like, um, Madame Zanity has been taken. So, uh, so if I was you, I, I'd cut my losses now. Love, forget you, I forget you ever saw Pandora. Um, and it just pisses Diane off. Um, they take her inside the House of Mystery. Um, which did, did you know about the House of Mystery at all? I didn't. I. It's basically I, the the JLD's like base of operations. Um, is it a magic house? It feels it is like a, a magic it is a house. magic house that can teleport. Yeah, it's pretty, okay. Does it have a spirit of the house? I'm curious. Uh, in some versions, I think the, I think the the movie the the Justice League Dark animated movie does a version. It feels the, like there should be a spirit of a the spirit. House. It, 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 the whole thing's pretty much a haunted house. So, like there are like entities that come in and out of the house regularly. It's no, pretty. No, no, cool. But the house itself should be like alive and a. Character. Oh, I see. Okay, I see what you mean. No, it is. It is not that. Like make it monster house. Yeah. Um, but waiting for them inside the House of Mystery is Batman and his crew uh, with Phantom Stranger and just, just oh my god, Mikhail Hannon group shots are just something They're great. Else. They're, They're great. something else. Oh my we god. are flooding this issue with so many, we're flooding this story with so many characters because um, the ants, so we find out the answer that the question gave to Superman is that Dr. Psycho 
<laughs> who is clearly a different version of Dr. Psycho than the version of the character I'm familiar with because of the Harley <laughs> Quinn show, but I was still giving the voice of Tony Hale because... <laughs> As you should. As you should. Um, I also just really have to laugh at the name of the newspaper, the uh, the Kandak Times. <laughs> yeah. It's just Also, it's in English. Is, <laughs> right? It's like... <laughs> Like, okay, cool. You know, they could have just made this, like, an international newspaper. Right, like, like you, you didn't need to tie it to uh, to Kandak and, and make it... I don't, I don't want to say offensive, because it's not offensive. It's just kind of funny. It's just um, it's just out of place. It doesn't... Yeah. It doesn't um, feel right, so... Anyway, back at uh, back in uh, Argus, um, uh, everyone is aware of, of Superman sickening and dying and the question's infiltration and... Um, they try to fight him off briefly for two pages, and then we're back to the house of mystery. <laughs> it's oh my god, the story's yeah. so all over the place. Oh my it's, god, just slow. It's all over down. the place, and Lemire is he's he's working with what he's given. Like he's working I, with what he's given th- really well. This is clearly not his plot line. This was clearly handed to him, and he has to write it. Like and he has that, to that's write a, it. that's how I'm reading this at least. Yeah, I, I feel like the, this is. The issues with this story have to fall squarely on the shoulders of Jeff Johns. I mean, I wouldn't even say that. Again, this is a big leaning theory that I'm I'm going to talk about in our, in our last issue, and I'm not going to talk about it a second sooner. Um, okay, so we have, you know, now instead of the JLA versus the regular Justice League, it's the JLD versus the regular Justice League. Well, pl- it's regular Justice League plus some JLA members. Yeah, right, yes. And because... Zatanna, who's a JLD member. <laughs> but not at this point. Oh my gosh, there's so much. There's a lot, and it's none of it's explained very well. I feel feel like I'm describing a kid playing with his action figures. I'm not the kid playing with his action figures. I'm describing a kid playing with his action figures. (laughs) A kid playing with his action figures while on the biggest sugar rush possible, because... And like, like there's there's something admirable about it too, because like, you know, we're still nailing the characterization, it's really fun, but like, there's so much. Like, this isn't a bad story. It's just, you know, has a lot of potential to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. It just isn't. Um, so what so are as, as, gonna... as these two teams square off, Constantine just walks up to Billy Batson and is like, hey, kid, come with me. And he's like, okay. And they just fuck off for the rest of the issue. <laughs> They're gone. Um, At that point, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Uh, my brain was like, wait, <laughs> what? Like, hang on. How? What? Is no one gonna? If if nothing else, it's it, it's leading up to probably like my favorite issue. In oh, the, it's leading up to the, the best stuff. issue of the of of the event. Yeah, um, but on initial read, I'm like, why? Hang on, shouldn't you still be involved in this? Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, again, Some people are squaring off. Nobody's actually fighting. You know, just... Star Girl joins Diana's side because. <laughs> Well, so, so, does, so does Hawkman and Zatanna and Steve, right? Is Steve here? No, Steve is here, but he no, doesn't Steve. join Wonder Woman's side. Arthur does. That's Aquaman right. Aquaman okay. does. That's it's, correct. So, like, battle lines are being drawn. However, like, the battle lines Jacob, and the Jacob, conflict... don't you get it? Don't you get it? This is the Trinity War. Yeah, but the war we... has no, like... <laughs> There are no fights. <laughs> there are no fights. Nobody's <laughs> fighting. This is... <laughs> well, no, they, they start we, fighting. Well, we, but, go, um... well, we go back to Argus, and, th- and then there's some fighting. But it's mostly Superman kicking everybody's ass as he slowly dies. Um, yes. And then, uh, him, um... him, Cyborg, and my Martian Manhunter leave together. Um, oh, Dude, and a Waller... couple of people that can fly, I guess. Also, <laughs> Oliver Queen has... has, has... Arrows that basically make him Spider Man. Yeah, who did he latch on to? Oh, Mar- uh, Martian Manhunter, I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, let's finish off this issue. Anyway, so the outsider is talking to, Z- uh, to, to Xanadu, and uh, and the, the, the whole point of this issue is we're just leading up to this big cliffhanger where the outsider is like, I have a mole among the Justice League. And doesn't it suck knowing that it's pretty much the exact same twist from like three issues ago? Yeah, yeah. I, Looking back I, at that, like, this is a cool cliffhanger, but the payoff is just, like, a twist you've already seen. <laughs> you know who, honestly, I was maybe hoping would be hmm. the, the mole? 
Who? Element Woman. I think her That'd being be cool. like. You could like easily manipulate her, yeah. Being manipulated and accidentally doing this awful stuff, you could do some great character work with that. Instead, we get what we get, which is shit, and I don't like it. I Moving don't. on, Constantine number five, the best issue in this whole. I event. love this cover. It's a, it's a great cover, and, and and it's not even like a bait cover. Like that's something that actually happens in the issue. <laughs> so, uh, so we go right into it. We're in so this New is an New interlude. York City, um, and, uh, and, and, this, and and we're this at the interlude, star, which is is like we take a breather we have um we have these two guys in in a saloon in new york it feels like a western almost even though we're in new york yeah (laughs) they're talking um in strolls shazam and john constantine (laughs) the most uh, unlikely duo that works so well for some reason i don't know what would make you put these two characters together but you're just glad that it happened, and and it totally works. Um, so, uh, so so apparently, um, according to Shazam, um, Constantine had something uh, he'd want to see, something to do with my real family. Um, and uh, and all this pretty much is is John Constantine being a bastard. Um, he's, he's trying to he's trying to trick Billy here. Um, he says, you know, in order for any of this to work, like he has to like become his true self. So so Shazam depowers and becomes Billy Batson. Um, and you just get some really fun interactions here. Like Constantine doesn't even really comment on the fact that like Billy's just a kid because I don't think it matters to him. I, I think John also knows somehow. Um, it's not quite explained. I magic, magic. Also, yeah, like, and 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 that's actually a valid excuse. <laughs> yeah. So he takes out. He, he cuffs Billy. Okay, so he gets Billy back to Billy. Takes out a voodoo doll to you know take his powers and cuff him to the bar. Um. And he steal he's stolen thunder, and that is that is the title of the issue. Steal, stealing thunder. <laughs> um, once again, Ray Fox is on this issue, and he's so good. He he he, he um is a great writer. Um, we go over to the uh, Bernese Alps in Switzerland. <laughs> in Switzerland, um, uh, where this uh, where this uh, cult is, uh, is 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 doing some magic shit, um, and. Uh, Sorry, they want to make Constantine fall and conquer every mage in the world. Um, and they're speaking to Lloyd, uh, the, the pink haired guy from the bar. Um, and he says, you know, he says a magic word, the one I give you. And he turns into a demon. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> um, uh, and and uh, it, it, we go back over to the bar. Then the demon attacks John. Um, at which point, uh, Constantine says Shazam and becomes a Shazam god. And I just I love the image of this. It's so good. <laughs> it's it's just, it's so fitting. I feel like someone just wanted to draw Constantine as Shazam, <laughs> and fought really really hard to make <laughs> and got that exactly what, what they wanted. And it's perfect. Um, so basically all that's happening here is John tricked Billy here just to steal his powers so he could fight this demon. Demon. And it's great. And, like, you get it? John's really sympathetic. Um, and Billy is also characterized really well. Mm -hmm. Um, like, also the power... Like, this being your first actual, like, Constantine issue where he's, like, the focal point of the story, like, it's a great showcase of of, of his character and, 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 like, who he is. And the... Like, even though this is, like, a rebooted Constantine for the new 52. Um, mm-hmm. cause, but, yeah, it's great. Also, just, he, like, the power isn't, like, is 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 tearing him up from the inside. Mm-hmm. So he has to, uh, to give it back to Billy, then uh, Billy becomes Shazam again. And uh, ju- just this is just as uh, as get, right after Constantine rips off the head of the demon, which is in this really great panel. <laughs> it's a full page. Um, but Billy takes back his powers, then pretty much tells John to fuck off, you know, as he should, because John's a bastard. Um, and uh, and he leaves. John is left all alone in this bar. Coughing up blood. Yes, because um, he is 
Ben Pro- shot in the probably chest. Fatally wounded. Um, he, he falls to the ground. Two ghosts show up and pull out his ghost, saying, Hi, John, remember me? It's Chris, the guy you killed a couple weeks ago. And guess what? It's time for payback. <laughs> and that's the issue. And it's pretty fucking great. I don't know. I love it. It's, it's a really great issue. It shouldn't work. But I, I think what really works is that it's an issue that has one focal plot line. Mm-hmm. That has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Oh, how nice one is issue. that? Wouldn't it be great if all comics were like that? I'll, I'll even settle for every issue in this in this collection. I would settle for that much because we're kind of going right back into the madness. But we have a slight respite with another uh, Ray Fox issue with Trinity of Sin Pandora number two. Uh, I always feel like a fucking idiot saying the full title of this, of this Trinity of Sin series. Like, I don't know. I, I just usually say like Pandora number one or Phantom Stranger number one or whatever, you know? I yeah, know. but you see, this is, this is the actual title. I um, know. And... I don't know. I think this is where the Pandora issues kind of dip. Um, I mean, j- just for this one issue for me. Um, this is where, like, a bunch of plot stuff has to happen. Basically. Like... It's, it, 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 it's, it's a bit wordy, I think. And I think it just... It, I don't know. It kind of drags it down just a little bit. Yeah, um, so... We start in Egypt. Yes. Um, uh, we see... Uh, uh, Pride and Envy. Pride. And greed? Yeah, it's greed. No, envy. Um, or no, Envy. Envy's the green one. En- envy's the green one because yeah. you're green, green with, green with envy. envy. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's a whole thing. Greed's the weird one with the giant sack. We had a whole talk about this in the Shazam episode. And yes. I still can't, and I still can't remember. <laughs> anyway, but they talk for a little bit. Um, Basically, go, their mother's trying to kill them. So, 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 so <laughs> Envy, you go block her. Um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll do this and... So, okay. So then we go to Bell Reeve, where these two characters who will pop up, they're, one of them works for Argus, the other works for Shade. Um, uh, Kincaid is the name of the lady, she works for Shade. Paul Chang is the guy that works for Argus. And, you know... Um, and they're just trying to find out what's going on here. Yes. Um, they're I mean, basically, while... I'd say they're the audience surrogate, but they aren't quite the audience surrogate. No. Oh, no. They're, 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 I don't know. Their, their dialogue is too complex to be an audience surrogate. <laughs> um, but no, uh, we go over to Maryland then, when uh, uh, where Pandora is meeting up with, I forget this guy's name, Marcus. That's her, yeah, her pretty much her arms supplier. Her um, arms dealer. Um, it's like, you know, I'm I'm going to I wanted to end my curse, but I, I started some kind of war. And I will say Ray Fox does a great job of making you really sympathize with Pandora this issue. Like mm-hmm. really well. Yeah. Um, um but then uh this team of three three super beings show up, uh Vandal Savage, Giganta, and uh Signal Man. Um I'm sure okay. you know two of those people. <laughs> I know two of them. I will say. <laughs> Like, Signal Man feels like the odd character out here. Most definitely. Like, like I don't know. Um, but yeah, Savage. So so they're all working for the Secret Society, which is like... It's this thing that's been in the background of all the Trinity War issues, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and... It, like, they're clearly, like, the whole, it's obvious they're the ones manipulating events to make the Trinity War happen. Mm-hmm. But we don't see nearly enough of them in the actual Trinity War issues. No, oh, like, no, they're they're barely a presence. Yeah. Um, which I, I don't love. So they're searching for Pandora. Um, you know, they're trying to find the box. And if they, you know, if they find the box, the world will be theirs. Um, mm-hmm. Ideally, it's... You know, Pandora, they all uh, want something. It's weird. Um, Vandal Savage is, is a great, fun character. Like, mm-hmm. he's like just the epitome of upper class privileged bastard who's now up, who's also immortal. You really, um, you really have to keep watching um, uh, the Justice League animated series. He has a really great, like, three parter to himself. It's really good stuff. Yes. Um, 
Anyway, um, but yeah, so Pandora leaves Marcus then. Because um, she uh, senses the three. Yeah, you know. she goes out to meet with them. Uh, Signal Man tries to attack her to no avail. Giganta um, tries to attack her to no some avail. avail. Well, some avail. She, she's, she's a little wounded, I guess. Um, um, but, uh, you know, sh- uh, she gets taken down by a, a sword to the eye? I think. A sword to the eye and that also explodes? Yeah, I guess. Um, she goes down, um, uh, uh, Vandal Savage goes to take on Pandora himself. There's this cool little fight sequence, um, really well drawn. And, uh... uh Danielson Pear is, is the guy on the art. Yeah. He's um, actually gonna be doing the, uh, the new Joshua Williamson Superman run. Well, cause didn't he also do Dark Crisis? Uh, yes, yes he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's fantastic. He's so good. Um, but yeah, the yeah, action's uh, yeah. great. We got a fight here. Uh, Vandal Savage gets uh, shot get, in the get, face. Gets his gets his eye shot out, and it's a it's a pretty gross but cool looking image. Because um, you know they're two immortals, so it's like you know what do you want? Pandora's like right. Vandal Savage, you're completely evil. Maybe you can open the box and, and fix all this. It doesn't work. Um, it, it backfires on him, and it leaves Vandal Savage crying. And saying he's sorry to show that he may have a little bit of conscience. Mm -hmm. Um, And we end the issue with our two special agents going to hunt down Pandora. And that's that. That's it's the, a bit that's it's the, a bit of a dip in quality from the first Pandora issue, but I think the last Pandora issue makes, makes up, up for that. It. Yeah. I mean, okay. I think honestly, I think some of this was just they were allocated X amount of issues to do this entire story in. And they didn't but, have enough this, this material. This is kind of where you have to expo- expo- ex- the exposition dump, I think. Yeah, and they didn't. Oh. Well, and they just didn't have enough material to do everything that Johns wanted in the event. Yeah. Um, or possibly editorial wanted in the event if editorial had a hand in this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we move on to a now a, 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 an issue that actually feels like it di- more directly ties into what our characters are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, Trinity of um, Sin, the Phantom Stranger number 11. Yes, which again, is just, I, I don't know what 10 issues of this series were like before Trinity War started, but I mean, hey, I'm kind of interested. <laughs> uh, this um, is, um, yeah. I, I will say, we were DMing um, while, while I was reading this, and or you were rereading it, and I think you reread, you read it faster than I did. Yeah, um, uh, well, said, I think hey. you, you actually finished the whole thing a little bit before me, but uh, but I had read this issue before you, and um, it, it's a great issue. It's got a really big drawback, though, of being really wordy, though. But it's um, written by J.M.D. Mateus, who is... Yes, um, who wrote uh, the JLI stuff, though. Yeah, or I think Susan's co-wrote one. with Giffen, but yeah. Yeah, um, but you, he's, he's uh, you know, he's one of the longer working writers uh who's who's on this collection and you can kind of tell there, there's just a bit of an older approach to this issue um I and mean, not, not, not that it's a bad thing but you know like when you're reading issues with i think a, a, a bit of a better pace because we've sort of worked out the kinks of like writing really dialogue heavy issues having this here does kind of take you back at first um but it's not bad it's a great issue actually um it's just got a lot of dialogue. Not not like Roger Stern levels or anything. And, and this is the issue, I think, where the surrealism that, that that our good friend English Giraffe was referring to really happens. And I think it's I think it's actually really well done here. Mm. Mainly because partially because it isn't Jeff Johns writing it, but also because we're dealing with characters who are dealing with the afterlife. And we're taking a character like Batman and putting him in this mystical space, which is always it's always interesting, right? Because Batman's, you know, a clinical scientific detective um, mm-hmm. or scientific in quotes because you have Batman villains who, you know, aren't scientifically possible, but like they're sci-fi, can't be sci-fi, like sit like Clayface and Mr. Freeze. Yeah. But like they're, they're sort of grounded in some sort of reality where this is magic, the afterlife and musings on that. Um, because Because we start basically in... Heaven's Basement. Which is just a cool idea. I don't know. I dig that. Um, 
and it's drawn as mostly this like white void and i just i don't know it's a cool visual and, and um the art uh who's doing the art on this one uh this is uh fernando blanco yeah he does a really good uh blanco and then uh brad anderson doing the colors they work together to, to make like the white void could be really uninteresting like mm-hmm. but there's the still hand. like just a small amount of detail there that really brings it to life yeah and it's, well it's never completely white there's always subtle gradients on each page um mm-hmm. which is a really good um and just it, it keeps your eye moving and it helps it especially helps even out just the more text like I didn't struggle with this like I struggled with, say, some Roger Stern issues in Death of Superman. That's um, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, also, also I, so, um, right in this first scene, I think you could re- – I, I, I talked about like how Boston Moran's kind of like a funny character. You, you kind of get his personality here. It's fun. It's like, um, I'll tell you, stranger, this place gives me the creeks, creeps, and I'm a freaking ghost. <laughs> it's great. I love him um he's wonderful uh he's he, he uh, he's actually a character that's also featured in the justice league dark animated movie and i forget what actor plays him but he, he absolutely nails it and that's just the voice that i constantly read his character with um but anyway yeah so we're uh, we're, we're, we're traversing heaven's basement um we eventually make our way out of here um uh into uh, what, at, right outside of the house of mystery here is where we end up or oh no sorry that's not where we actually are we're, we're catching up with characters outside of it yeah we're catching um, up with characters outside because dead, have... dead, dead man is visiting them. That's right. Yes. Um, you know we're we're trying to you know we're trying to basically find you know who killed Doctor Light. How how did that actually happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know the, the, we get to see the outside just the creepiness that is the way Blanco and Anderson draw the outside world mm-hmm. um, for like one panel. Also, Selena being just like a cat up in a tree. I, I love funny. that image. Yeah. Um, but we we get into this house, um, which is, I believe, the house of mystery. Um, and so the stranger, it's really hard to characterize someone as an outsider. And the stranger just feels always a little off, a little like just separate from the rest of the world, which I think is just a perfect characterization. Yeah, uh, you know it's like um, we we get this musings on you know maybe we should you we, it's probably best that we should leave the death dead alone because you know Bruce Wayne would clearly want to try to bring back his parents um, and to create peace. I love that Bruce knows Superman isn't responsible for what's happened. That this is think, all that's an that's an interesting plot point. Is that I think you know. The outsider is like, oh, yes, everyone's going to think that Superman killed Dr. Light. And it's like, not even Amanda Waller believes that. Like, nobody actually believes that Superman did it himself. No, it's it's all too weird. And everyone knows that, like, everyone can just see Clark deteriorating throughout all these issues. Like, yeah. Um, weird. Weird moment. I mean, weird plot point as a whole. Um, but anyway, uh, we, uh, we make our way through this. Um, and, we we uh, find out that sort of that Dr. Light was really pulled into the JLA against his will. Uh, and he was used as a weapon. Um, so, um, and it's, you know, uh, it's like, it's like, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's find, let's find who killed Dr. Light. We have to find a way in. So they go where everyone else is outside the house of mystery. Um, they bring dead men and Katana with them because, they're both familiar with the realms of the dead. Mm-hmm. They disappear. They they're sent after. Uh, they try to send after them. The idea is that like everyone has like their own different realm of heaven, like how they how they perceive it. Um, so like you know, uh, so so Katana like ends up with her her dead husband, um, and uh, and they have to like get her out of there. Eventually, like Phantom Stranger has to come and and break her from the illusion. Um, really great scene actually between the two of them. Really good stuff. I love um, this one image of Katana just and her taking her sword and and, and stabbing the Phantom Stranger. Um, like it's just very powerful art. Yeah, um, really good stuff here. Um, and then we, we go to Bruce's own personal heaven, which, which is a is Christmas, just... a Christmas Eve with him as a child, his dad reading him a Christmas Carol, um, four times, and and him begging to stay up late. It's you know. The whole idea of innocence and childhood lost, which is 
what Batman is. Um, and and Bruce shows a real humanity, knowing that you know, he wanted to glimpse it just for a moment. Like he wasn't mm-hmm. tempted to stay, but he he wanted to see it for a moment. Yeah. Um, and into which Batman says, "Like that moment has passed." As uh, as as Thomas finishes reading the passage that he's reading from Christmas Carol, really great stuff. I love that moment. Um, but anyway, we move on, uh, and we have uh, literal fucking angels we're introducing here. <laughs> yeah. So we find Doctor Light sort of <clears throat> stuck in energy, knowing that he did it unconsciously. Bruce brings him out to try to interrogate him uh, with, like, you know. You know, what happens, and all he can really remember is the pain of his death. Uh, and that, you know, all he knows is that it happened fast. Suddenly he was burning, and suddenly he was dead. And it's like, well, if we take him back to life, there never was a murder, and Superman is free. And Dr. Light is alive, and and um, uh, promise, and, and, you know, if if they can't bring him alive... Dr. Light makes the promise to, to take something to his wife and children. And then we have angels. Because this is the DC universe, which... I just... Lo- that's one of my favorite things about the DC universe, is just how, like, so many conflicting mythologies can all be true. They're all true. And they like to accentuate, sometimes in the same event, the kind of, like, just the conflicting nature of these yeah. these. I mean, mythologies. same thing happens with Marvel comics, too, but I found it far more prevalent in, uh, in DC. In yeah. DC, yeah. yeah. Um... um but yeah, uh, that that happens. Uh, it turns out to be futile as they're all essentially cast out from heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's it ends on a very somber note. Um, yeah, we're, we're like, you know, Arthur is still he still has to pass on. You know, he, he can't actually be brought back or anything. Um, the angel Zario uh, sends uh, sends everybody else away, including the Phantom Stranger. And that's that. That's that. Yeah, just a really solid issue in the middle yeah, of all this. Really nice. Weird, weird that the tie-ins are where, like, the best material is. Yeah. Um, we then go into our next actual Trinity War chapter. Uh, this is JLA number seven. Um, we're also now in the last couple issues of the entire collection, which is really nice. Um, and we're still just a little over two hours into this thing. So we Stop. got this. We got We've this. We've got this. <laughs> so, okay. I'm aiming for under three hours. <laughs> Once again... Jeff Johns is drawing in even more characters, which, like, okay, I get it. I get it. Superman did a murder. It makes sense to bring in Lex Luthor. But he doesn't do much. Um, no. I mean, honestly, I think this is probably my, my favorite actual, like, main chapter of the six of Trinity War. Because, I don't know, I just really like the role that Lex Luthor plays in all this. It's it's a small and very insignificant role, but I don't know. I really It's like very that. nice, but... We have Lex Luthor finding out Superman has been accused of manslaughter through a Daily Planet article. And, you know, his his business is like, oh, we're, this is going to get you free. You're going to get out of here. And then he fires them. Mm-hmm. Because he is pissed. Because he wasn't the one who did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I love it. Um, and Pandora shows up with her box. And Lex is just completely unfazed. He's like, whoever you are, if you're counting on me to react to it with shock and awe that you've appeared out of thin air, prepare to be disappointed. I've seen a man fly. Wow. And I just, oh, I love that line so much. It's so good. Um, and, and she asks, basically asks him, open the box. Because um, that's, that's, that's what she's doing. Mm-hmm. And that's the end of that scene. We then... Uh, well, we, we, after after a quick scene in Washington D.C., we then go where over... where we do we do see Waller's reputation basically in tatters. Mm-hmm. Um, we also see Plastique, and um, uh, so placing and the outsider placing this device on Doctor Light's corpse, or Plastique places the device on Doctor Light's corpse. Implying explosion. And then we go to Pittsburgh. Where we see our version of uh, Dr. Psycho, Psycho here. Who, I don't know, I do actually kind of love the design of here. It's a good design, however... He's meant to be just a creepy little man. I love Yes. <laughs> however, because I've been watching the Harley Quinn show... Yeah, oh yeah, you have to have the voice. <laughs> you just have to have the voice. Yeah, it's gotta be Tony Hale. He's so good. <clears throat> 
but um, uh, but yeah, he has these uh these like hostages that he's fucking with here. Um, our team of Justice League and JLA members and the question arrive. And the um, question, the question is all. This is always happens to be someone. This person is also here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, um, um, but yeah, so they they take on Doctor Psycho. Um, obviously, it's it's pretty easy. There's like a I million, love there's I like love, a million I love of how them. Element Woman like freeze everyone. It's like oh, it's it's gonna be okay, everybody. It's gonna be fine. Just stay calm. We're heroes. She's a delight. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, this is all uh, stopped when uh, Superman enters the picture. Um, he goes after Doctor Psycho, but uh, but Psycho is well. So here's what's interesting. Is that Green Arrow shoots an exploding arrow at who he thinks is Dr. Psycho. It's not Dr. Psycho, it's Cyborg. Um, so oh, now we have the whole idea of, okay, so an image was placed into Superman's head showing someone else as Dr. Light, which is how, which is why he would have used his heat vision and sort of what created this illusion and created this explosion. Mm-hmm. That's our explanation, and it's a blink and you'll miss it explanation, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Like I think, and that's yeah. been the like the big thrust of this book, just just thrown out right there and explained. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then Superman is here. He attacks Doctor Psycho. Uh, Doctor Psycho then just gets in his head. Mm-hmm. reads his and, backstory uh, and we have one of the scariest scenes in the comic where, where again Martian Manhunter is one of those powerful characters in the whole DC universe um, he he is, is an even stronger telepath than Psycho is and he just freaks Psycho out it's great um, uh, we have a brief um, scene outside the house of mystery where Simon Baz is trying to prove he's good as a Green Lantern I want to read more of this character because I don't think you this will. comic is doing him justice. He's, he's, he's introduced in the late Jeff Johns Green Lantern run. So, so yeah. So we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, we catch up with them. Um, uh, meanwhile, Selena is talking to Steve and we have a nice little JLA meeting plus Flash. <laughs> in in um, the House of Mystery, there's food laid out by the house itself. Um which is great. They go to the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the strangest of them all? They see the Phantom Stranger. And this gives them it gives the Phantom Stranger, Katana, Dead Man, and Batman a way out. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, back with effects. Meanwhile, of, back. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. We see the after effects of Psycho's mind wipe, and it is terrifying. Oh, my God. Yeah. There's just those black eyes. Ugh, awful. Um, we find out that the Secret Society sent him there. And once again, they're the. They're the ones behind all this, um, or at least orchestrating it. You know, they're, they're on their orders, at least. Um, and uh, uh, we have the Adam terrified that, you know, if I hadn't lied to you about my connections with Waller, maybe this never would have happened. And they, you know, make up. And it's a great scene. It's amazing. I love this character. Mm-hmm. If For only now, that was it. <laughs> This should be the end of her arc. It, well, or at least the beginning of a spin-off to her own her own book, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're all going to go head back to Waller. We go back to Luther, getting the box. Um, and then... Uh, D- Diana and the Justice League Dark and the couple of in there. They, uh, yeah. They all, yeah. <laughs> um, they all arrive there. They, they stop Pandora from giving Luther the box. Um, Diana oh, sees the box is corrupted. Yes, we have. Um, we're having another another Jeff Johns putting a bunch of shit really quickly right at the end, and mm-hmm. this is perhaps where it gets really bad for it, just because we're getting I mean, close to the end. I mean, I do kind of love this cliffhanger of Diana being corrupted. Um, it's a great cliffhanger, but like yeah. all the intercutting. And I love the way Doug Mank draws that last page. It's crazy, um, because Doctor Light's body explodes. We have the have a nice a nice day symbol on uh, Waller's systems. Explosions. Diana has the box and she is corrupted and it's a terrifying last image. Yeah. Um, but hey, we can't finish the story yet. We have another interlude first. Um, uh, it's actually a pretty good one. Uh, it's yes, the last so Pandora. This is a really issue. interesting one. Trinity of Sin Pandora number three. 
Yes. Um, um, and we, we we saw brief glimpses of this in the first Pandora issue, where like her like sort of like just you know training herself, calming herself down, you know, from like you know, freeing herself of the guilt that she felt before. This um, this is the issue where I'd argue that Pandora in the present it all clicks. Like issue one, Pandora is still very erratic and not, and and that's why we we saw her history with so many just quick cuts to different things. Whereas this is finding an inner peace and finding herself and having just something click within her, which is really interesting. So, you know, we start in 1330, uh, Mount Song, um, in the Himalayas, I believe, is what we're mm-hmm. supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, where she's with this monk, and she's musing on the nature of evil. Mm-hmm. Um, this idea of, you know, you, you wish she wishes to kill evil and possibly even stop it from happening. And it's like, you know, you know, I've, I've been teaching you, I've, you're, you're immortal. A time will come where, you know, you have to draw your weapons and you have to face the flood and you have to face evil. And that's what this issue is. Cause we yeah. see we go. So interestingly, I think this issue is misplaced because Shazam is in the all black already here. And the fight is already broken out and the seven deadly sins are already here. Interest. You're right. It shouldn't this be between parts. I mean, I guess not because five chapter five leads directly into six. Yeah, but like, so it's but but if nothing else, like this this happens in the middle of chapter five, doesn't it? I, I, yeah, but I think this might just be one where they. Can, I mean, they I have mean to... it's most. I mean, it's mostly a flashback issue, so it doesn't really yeah. like affect the overall story too much. But you see that, and you're like, "Wow, why is Shazam in all black? When the fuck did this fight actually start? Like, what's going on here?" Um, it, it, it feels it feels like it's just a we don't know where to place this. Yeah. Like, oh, it, definitely. It, yeah. It 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 almost feels like it would be better told like long after trinity war was already over but they want to release it as an interlude and it's just it's kind of weird i don't know it's weird yeah um but yeah so we're you know we but see anyway. the sins um, um i do love this uh i mean that that's a spread where we get the title page but the the spread after that i think is my favorite where you see oh, the, yeah, the different sins affecting the different characters here um so like you know like the wrath page is all in red the pride panel is is all in purple it's really cool i like that and and they all sort of really fit in with uh pretty much with all the characters that you know they're they're color coded for um Mm -hmm. really well um and we basically find out where it's like you know we have conquered it and we you you must love us mother because all these sins want is is to be loved yeah um um we go back to uh, 1594 then, and uh, and we, we get the start of these flashbacks where um, uh, Pandora is training with this archer. Do we actually learn uh, his name at all? Uh, his name is Adelger, um, hmm. who I believe is a historic figure. May not be. He looks a bit like Robin Hood. He does. Um, he does. Uh, we have some musings over the philosophical concept of the problem of evil, of, you know, uh, you know, why would God? Why would an all good God per, permit evil to exist? Um, it's this whole and and you know there's some philosophical musings um, about that. You know it's it must be required by the perfection of the universe, uh, and you know uh, this whole idea of uh, comes from that that idea comes from Saint Thomas Aquinas. We're in weird philosophical theology territory. For a page, right, right, right in the middle of all of this, it's, it's uh, great. which it's a weird place to, it's both a weird place to go, but a fitting place to go. It's weird. Yeah. And again, this whole this whole issue is weirdly placed, but it's actually a pretty good issue. Yeah. Um. um back in present day, once again, the fight is going on. Um. Wrath has has uh has, has his claws sort of dug into everybody here. Um. We see Sloth and who's the other one there? That's Lust. Lust, that's it. Um, I always I find this interpretation of lust fascinating because a lot of like things that do seven deadly sins want to make lust like a sexy lady, mm-hmm. um, and it, that is clearly not what they're going for. No, they're going for the actual like definition of lust being utter derangement, mm-hmm. um, and and utter desire. Um, uh, but yeah, so pen and then flashback like, again, uh, seventeen oh three this time, uh, where she's sort of with like. Uh, like Celtic druids, um, you know, she's still trying to figure out, you know, you know what, what, what can, what can you do to possibly destroy, you know, something that doesn't have a body, and you know, it's musings on reflection and identity, um, 
all building to you know something that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we then catch back up with our uh, our Argus and Shade agents, um, meeting up with uh, with uh, Pandora's arms dealer Marcus. Um, and I don't know. It, 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 it's it's just kind of following up on a plot line that was just never resolved. And uh, I doesn't... imagine it gets resolved in like further issues of this book. Yeah, probably. Because like, this book does continue for like a, a while at least. Uh, um, I forget exactly how many issues, but yeah, it, it went on for a fair bit. And Pandora was still like a presence in the New Fifty Two after this. Um, because, like I said, like uh, I, I read Forever, Forever Evil Blight, I think, was the story from Justice League Dark after this. And there are some Pandora tie-ins there. There. Uh-huh. So she yeah. exists. So the whole idea is that Pandora has to learn to accept the, the possible, you know, the, the flaws within herself. Um, you know, she sees herself. Something's changed. All this makes for a really great, like, if you just read these three Pandora issues on their own, it it makes for this really tight character arc there for her. It really does. Um, The trouble is, of course, that it ties into this larger story arc, and I feel like you could do a lot with just this three-part story for Pandora. Honestly, it's a shame that they, that, like, before this, all they were doing was treating Pandora as a mystery box. Because mm-hmm. that's what they and she's a doing. genuine character, like like, and her solo title treats her as such, and it's really nice, but um, is not represented elsewhere, unfortunately. Yes, but she kills Envy. You know he's gone. How I can explain, but first, who's next? And that's like, it's a great ending to like Pandora's story, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, we go into then our second to last Trinity War issue, which is which is uh, Justice League Dark twenty three. We haven't actually mentioned it up to this point. All of the main tr- six Trinity War titles have connecting covers um, that lead oh, to one yes, thing. They do. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. I don't know. I just I like them all together. Um, but anyway, uh, we get some more Mikhail Hannon art, and I'm just gonna wax lyrical about that uh, for this whole this, this whole time. Segment. It's, this time it's just Jeff Lemire writing. So uh, yeah, well he he only he co- uh, he solo wrote the last JLD issue. Yeah, oh right, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh right, he was co-writing for the JLA. He, he co-wrote the JLA. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so but anyway, books. this is where that fight actually breaks out uh, that we saw in the Pandora issue. Um, Basically, this first page is essentially seeing the future of of like, or no, no, seeing all the past of everything that's set up to this point. You know, um, and it's very lyrical. I really like it, mm-hmm. um, but. Like uh, we, Pandora, uh, uh, Pandora's box once again has gotten to uh, is is still uh, affecting Diana. Um, she lashes out on everyone, uh, at which point Shazam finally returns. He comes back, at which point he gets infected by Pandora's box, and then he becomes an all black version of. So, I mean, not yeah. I mean, just the red part of his costume becomes Dude. black, and he kind of um, looks like Black Adam. And so, yeah, which is intentional, but so, um, and also like it's reverberated, I guess, through like ma- like the magic of the DC or like. Okay, so it seems to reverberate through the DC universe somehow because you see images of oh, we see um, Swamp Thing. We see uh, Jay Earth Garrick, two. I we, think. We, okay, so so that's actually Earth Two. There was a title in the New Fifty Two called Earth Two at the time. Um, so that's I, I guess it's not just our universe. Um, we see Animal Man, uh, Etrigan, um, Ted Cord. Oh no, that's Animal Man. I yeah. thought it was Ted Cord. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was Animal Man. Uh, Swamp Thing, like I said, uh, I'm I. I don't think, know who the others are. I think that's Scott honest. Snyder's American Vampire character, maybe. Oh, that's right. Okay, yep, that sounds right. And then, uh, or sorry, no, 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 sorry, not American Vampire. Wouldn't that? Mm, he looks like a vampire. He, it, it might be uh, from I Vampire, which was another New Fifty Two title. Okay, so so a vampire character, um, uh, a princess warrior lady. In, in I'm purple. not sure who that is, to be honest. Um, and then, of course, Batman and Dead Man. Um, and yeah, and, and just, oh, 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 yeah, and then the fucking next page with Billy Batson's shit-eating grin holding Pandora's box. I just, oh, I love that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Three eyes. Uh, um, anyway, back to the House of Mystery, <laughs> I guess. Um, we're jumping around still. We have all these uh, disparate groups of characters. And uh, we have to bring them together for a finale. So it's like, yeah, right. We, uh, Diamond's we're like, we're right, to find I out. sensed everyone, including Madame Xanadu. Yeah, so we're trying she's to find out. She's captured. Now. Well, yeah, it's easy. Okay, see, now we find out that she's actually captured. Um, so now she's a damsel jane. Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. For the first nine issues of Trinity War, she's not a damsel. 
Now she is. <laughs> Ten. No, oh, wait, no, nine, because she isn't. Right? Uh, Free comic book day doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> oh. Uh, Argus headquarters, but there's an explosion. Ollie helps break everyone out. So it is Element Woman, Cyborg, The Atom, and Martian Manhunter. It, again, um, we're just rattling off, off lists of characters. It, like, I just, that's all we're There doing. is just so many characters doing a lot, and it's, it comes quickly. And they consistently we... change, like, who they're paired up with. So we're describing, like, oh, yeah, well, now they're with this group, and now these characters are with this group. And it's just like, okay, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it, it really Waller, is. Is, Waller is essentially left broken, and it's where she's, I think, characterized the weakest a little bit. Like, mm. just because she's, like... You know, uh, I sh- like I get the character lashing out, but like it doesn't feel like a, the Amanda Waller that I know as a cool, calculated. I mean, it's very much it, New Fifty Two Amanda Waller is very much not the Amanda Waller you know. So yeah, yeah. Um, we reveal that Firestorm is going to make Kryptonite. I, I feel and that's like, like that's that was what's, yeah. Well, it's also it's sort of been weakening Superman this whole time. Um, yeah. Um. But yeah. <laughs> that, that isn't quite what's been weakening Superman. It's what. Oh, that's right. Isn't that revealed next issue? Yeah, it's revealed next issue, but like. It's not the Firestorm Kryptonite. No, but like the Firestorm Kryptonite thing, as a plot point, hasn't gone anywhere. No. Oh, God. Like, uh, uh, oh, it's like, oh, okay, that, that isn't it. Like, I guess it's supposed to be a red herring, but like. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, so, red herrings usually. In a mystery, a red herring <laughs> usually has some sort of relevance to the plot in general, uh, be it a character motivation or just some some reveal. Um, but this just doesn't like it's it's just a closed loop of he was making kryptonite, and that's it. Doesn't yeah doesn't play in other than I guess to show that Waller is you know shady, but we already knew that because it's a man yeah. of Waller. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so they attack Waller. We then cut back to the bo- to, to to the box scenario, um, where Shazam's desires of I'm I'm sick of everyone telling me what to do. So he attacks Frankenstein. He drops the box. Um, Frankenstein briefly gets the box, um, and you know calls everyone a sinner and abomination. All of you. Um, which is again interesting. Interesting characterization mm-hmm. goes back to Mary Shelley's original novel more than you might think, Joey. I, uh, I, I'm aware. I'm just saying that, like you know, like DC's Frankenstein is just it. It's just, just not that character. Is, is all it's to a, say. It's a thi- okay. It's a thing. It, it's not literally meant to be like, oh yeah, well Mary Shelley's novel happened and then this happened. Like no. Okay. Like, so there's. Stuff. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's an explanation. Um, yeah. So, uh, Zatanna is here to protect everyone from the box because she realizes so she can protect the three of them, which is a great little bit of revelation. Like, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a shame that it's coming so late in, yeah. in the story. We, we do get a, a great, pretty big sequence here where um, Zatanna is like protecting everybody from all this. Um, and so uh, you get a lot of those uh, great, like, backwards spelling spells. And, uh, yes. Well, let's see. I don't know. Um, she's protecting everybody. Uh, Diana's still on a rampage because I guess she's still being affected by the box. Everyone's so. kind of still also being affected. But that revelation hasn't actually come yet. <laughs> no. Yeah, so she knocks the tan out. The box is in between them. Diana goes to pick it up. And then suddenly, guess who's back? Back again. John Constantine's back. Tell a friend. Tell um, a friend. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, he, he's back. Um, uh, and he can't be grumpy because he's already filthy, which is, yeah, fair. It, it's so fucking perfect. It's such a perfect revelation. I just, I love so, that. And, and so he he takes the ten out of the fight. And this is the first time this issue we're able to breathe for a page. Mm-hmm. Like, but literally just a page because they go to this Greek temple, um, the temple of, 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 of the Hephaestus. I can't speak today. Um, but yeah, uh, they leave. It's literally just for a page because they find Xanadu and then uh, Batman and Dead Man's crew show up um, and 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 they, and they actually come face to face with the outsider now who um, who says, uh, and now uh, and now it's time to open it. Talking about the box and because it's, it's a doorway. 
Yeah. Surprise. Um, okay. At this point, I'm like, what? At this point, I really had to stop and just think, like, so wait, and, what? And we're leading up to a finale, right? <laughs> right. Like this has to be an ending. Like we have. Okay. I so have I got... like several plot threads just being loose. So I got to talk about this though, quick, because now that we're actually focusing on the outsider now as a character. Um, you had a theory about the outsider, for pretty much from like his first appearance when you saw him here. It's just because he looked like okay, a, no, Hang on, you didn't have it spoiled for you or anything, right? Right, right. No, I just saw him drawn. I'm like, what's, I my I didn't really have a theory. I just I was like, why is he drawn like Alfred? <laughs> like, I didn't call it call it, <laughs> but I kind of called it. <laughs> so. This brings us into the final Justice, issue of Trinity War, Justice, Justice League, League 23. 23. And again, keep in mind, this was, you know, the, the big build-up. This is apparently what everything was leading up to in the New 52. Uh, we recount the events of Justice League origin. Um, uh, beautifully drawn here. Um, it's Ivan Reese, right? It's Ivan. Yeah, Ivan Reese is on this issue. Yes, Ivan Reese is penciling. Three different people are inking. Rod Reese is doing colors. Yeah. Okay, it's it's cool. good shit. Like, like like if nothing else, like as we've mentioned before, like all the art in this book is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, like, I love the rendition of, of of origin, the way it's the way it's drawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, we uh, and during all this, apparently, we learn that the outsider came through uh, from his world into this world, and he has been watching the Justice League grow and 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 be strong ever since. We see some uh, other encounters um, uh, with, with, with and the whole idea, Well, the whole idea is that. The Justice League of, the, or the the Justice League of his world, also faced Dark Side, but didn't necessarily. The implication is that they didn't necessarily win, or make it, or or something. Something broke. To get I mean, this- we learned that 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 last one that didn't make it is just blatantly untrue by the end. Yeah. Well, um, it's hinted that he doesn't know. So he comes to the world. Everything's been reversed. East is west, and west is east. Literally. Um, <laughs> Um, and, so uh, he started recruiting enemies of the league. Yeah, which is um, where we get our secret society plot line, which is, I don't know. It, it it's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. The problem um, is we haven't really seen the secret society. Like, yeah, yeah, we haven't actually seen them like as a group together. Like, we we've seen photos of who's the lineup, but like, you promised Scarecrow, Mad Hatter, and a bunch of other characters. Yeah. And they're just not here. Um, but whatever. Um, we, so he is an outsider to the world. Yeah. Uh, this brings us to uh, to now. Uh, we, we recount the events of last issue where Constantine has Pandora's box. Um, as Constantine slowly realizes, as everybody starts to turn on him and every, uh, literally all of our characters arrive in this location at the Temple of Hephaestus, that uh, the, the box is now affecting everybody, and Constantine is the only one unaffected. Um, and it leads to this great vertical two-page spread uh, from Ivan Reese, um, and uh, where, where everyone's after Constantine because he's the only one unaffected by the box, and it's just it's, it's great stuff. It, it, and again, just making Constantine the focal point of all this is 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 kind of like perfect for me. I just I love John Constantine so much. Um, Honestly, he should be the backbone of the event, and it's such a shame. That I mean, he, he like, kind of they they, they kind of set him up that way, but also yeah, having him just dis- having him disappear for like three of the main issues is is, is a mistake. Yeah, and well, and not even being really in the first one at all. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's it's a whole thing. So uh, we get the moment then uh, from the free comic book day issue uh, redrawn by Ivan Reese. Um, and it looks see... great. Um, the context is very different now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, the whole but you're no Hal Jordan um, line. Makes no sense, considering they all know that Hal has been gone for a long time. Yeah. Like. But again, keep in mind, the free comic book day was probably building up Simon Baz as a new character. So, like, having the You're No How Jordan line in there made sense maybe, for a free comic book day like promotional one, issue. Maybe at one point a plan was to kill off Hal for the new 52? It's possible, but also given how the Jeff Johns run, run ends, I kind of doubt that. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what their, what the plan was, what's going yeah. on. And, and who's to say, really? But, um, it's like... So, you know, hey, new guy, you should worry about me. And, you know, you see Superman with the pillar. He's 
again, white, glowing eyes. Uh, you see the Adam in the image as the Adam. There are also, I think, just more characters in the image than, than was in the in the oh, spread. Most most definitely, yeah. Um, um, and essentially, this whole issue is a big fight. Um, it's a fight, and like it's like like, like oh yeah, Mira shows up out of nowhere, <laughs> and which is like it's like well, it's not Mira, it's it's um. The yeah, because it, it's Martian Manhunter, but it makes this a great moment where like Aquaman is literally like, Mira, what are you doing here? And then Martian Manhunter is like, she's not, and her arm becomes all green, and she punches him. It's funny. Um, right, so. Uh, yeah, like most of this is just a big fight. Um, there's a nice, again, another vertical two-page spread um, of Clark versus Diana, which is nice to see. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, like, I, such, it's such a great artist. Clark I, I screaming, him. I won't stop till Batman is dead. Diana trying to get the box. It's a whole thing. Um, so we have fighting, the box falls, the dust settles, Zatanna shouts out, Clark, Clark falls, Zatanna shouts out, nobody touched the box, it's gone dormant for the moment, so everyone's trying to stay back, Mm -hmm. and then it happens? So, okay, I want to describe this scene, because part of me loves it, a lot of me hates it, so... We learn of the uh, the kryptonite inside uh, Superman's body that was implanted there because Element Woman finds it because she turns into oxygen and well, she sees inside his body. Firestorm, Firestorm recognizes it. Element Woman confirms turns- where it is. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so Cyborg's like, how did a microscopic sliver of, of kryptonite get in his brain? And to which uh, Rhonda, the Atom, says, oh, that's an easy question to answer, Cyborg. I put it there. And, like, part of me just loves how cute she's drawn when she says that. She, I, I like how it's drawn. I just don't like the, 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 the twist. Yeah. It's, it is... Yeah. Um, the, the twist is... Surprise, she's been evil the whole time. Yeah. And, um, uh, and again, uh, part of me loves it, because I just, I just love the way it's drawn. I love the way the scene is handled. It's just I don't like what the scene is at its core. Yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't work, because it, it, we've seen the personal life of this character. Yeah, and she goes like, I know you thought I was part of the Justice League, and the JLA thinks I work for them, but the truth is, I don't work for any of you. To which Cyborg says, so you're a traitor? And again, another panel that I love, because she's drawn so cute. Oh, Vic, honey, honey. so are you. <laughs> I just, I love it. And I so know. so now we actually learn more what the grid is. Surprise, Cyborg's armor starts trying to kill him, and we get this great bit of body horror, but... Yeah, where the, the, the armor literally separates from his, his mangled body. It's just... Ugh, so, so and, and then I off. think it starts to like I can't help it completely separates or it covers him or what because we don't actually see Vic after this point. We really don't. Yeah. Um, so um, this character is Grid. Yes, this is the Grid. Um, which I, fun fact: the Grid is a playable skin in Injustice Two for Cyborg. Oh. Yeah. I mean that's cool. It's a cool and design, and, and he's actually played as like a different character. It's cool. Um, but anyway, cool. so uh, so the Outsider. Um, uh, uh, meets up with the grid. He, he he grabs Pandora's box and opens it up, and it creates this portal, this doorway. Um, and, uh, um, and and so so the whole idea is that surprise. We've been focused on the magic side of things. It's actually not magic. It's science. Surprise. So you know you know it opens a gateway to another universe, our universe, uh, the birthplace of evil. Yes. Um, All so, this time you were looking for who was behind this. As you would say on, as you say on your world, the butler did it. Which is again a pretty great line. I just, I kind of love the comedy of that. <laughs> there um, are some great lines here, but I don't love the issue. Like it. So, so then, I, I mean, I think the best thing to do right now is to describe the scene straight and then just discuss thoughts afterward. So, um, so evil Aquaman shows up, dressed dead. almost like Ocean Master in a cool yeah. design, a great he, design, who is wasted because he's dead. He's dead already. Um, and in walks the crime syndicate, um, featuring. Okay, so, do you know? Do you know the crime syndicate at all? I I don't, but they're, uh, it's obviously evil versions of the Justice so League. So, the crime syndicate are actually a really old, I think, '60s idea. Um, okay, that doesn't and, surprise me. Yes, which were then popularized in a post-crisis world by none other than Grant Morrison. Um, and oh. Grant Morrison brought back the crime syndicate. Do you know that animated film Crisis on Two Earths? I have heard of it. That is an adaptation of the Grant Morrison story that brought back the crime syndicate. Okay. So this is their re reintroduction to the DC universe post flashpoint. Um, and this, the, the, again, you're right. Evil justice league. That's all. They so are. like, like, um, like, 
Okay, so let me just make sure I know who these characters are. So, like, so we got Ultraman, uh, who is who is okay. So, well, first, let's do evil Aquaman. Sea King is obviously just Aquaman, but like, is Arthur Curry, but evil probably. Mm -hmm. So, Ultraman is Clark, evil Superman, right? Like, is a version of Clark. I won't go too into like the specifics of how these characters are different um, because we're going to cover the story that follows this, obviously, eventually. Um, but uh, but we can say who the characters are. So we've got Ultraman, we've got Superwoman, uh, Owlman, Deathstorm, um, I believe Johnny, Johnny Quick. We call him Johnny Quick, who is yes. also the Adam's, the Adam's boyfriend. Yes, uh, who is really Atomica. Um uh, Deathstorm and I forget the Green Lanterns. They maybe. call him Power Ring. That's it. That's it. Power Ring. So, um, um, so they all show up. Um, so the Owlman outsider... is Thomas Wayne. It's yes, ex- and the outsider is revealed to be the outsider is revealed to be Alfred. Um, and uh, the Crime Syndicate show up. Uh, we don't actually see what happens with the Justice League after this moment. Um, and uh, and they said that this world belongs to the crime syndicate, and that's that's the end. Well, that's the goodbye. That's that's, it. That's, that's, the, that's the end. That's that's the end of Trinity War. Um, that's, um, and so you can see why that's a problem. Here's my theory. Okay. So Trinity War was a decent mandate. I guarantee that. It, yes. It had to be a DC mandate because this is so clearly the story that Jeff Johns wants to tell. He shoves everything else aside so he could set up the reintroduction of the crime syndicate. Yes. And it really does feel like, like he was told, okay, well, we're setting up this, this thing called Trinity War. It's this I, play on the, the, the idea of trinities within the DC universe. Um, obviously, you can then promote it with the idea of Tension between Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. And you have like, the idea of the Trinity of Sin. And after all of that, Jeff Johns is like, I'm not actually interested in telling that story at all. I want to bring back the crime syndicate. And because this is the story that Johns wants to tell, he did not give his all to Trinity War. And you can tell. Oh, yeah, you can. You like, can absolutely tell. Because we've read really great Jeff Johns stories. And he can do really great things. And there are great moments throughout this story. I think. I love almost. I love like a lot of the individual character moments are fucking brilliant. They yeah, are great. But I the love fact them. that literally everything that Johns, Lemire, and Fox and everybody writes in this in these twelve issues gets completely swept uh, swept to the side at On the, the last, last couple minute. of pages. Like yeah, so that Johns could say this is what it's really all about is also, so telling of what Trinity War really was. The, this isn't an ending. Like, this isn't a. I mean, it's it's an ending in that the yeah, the idea of the Trinity War is over, but like it it, it isn't a satis. It doesn't like wrap up really any of the threads. Like it's like oh, it's just the Trinity War. The whole point is we are introducing the crime syndicate, and now you have to read another story. Yeah, like. Yeah. Um, thankfully, in my opinion, I don't think you need to read Forever Evil, which is the, really the event that he was building up here. Um, you could just read the Justice League issues that are collected in the next two volumes of Justice League and you'll be fine. Um, and I'm sure we'll eventually read Forever Evil. Oh, well, yeah, Evil. definitely. Yeah, we're going to finish the Jeff Johns Justice League run. It's only going to take us like two more episodes worth of podcast episodes. Um, yes. Um, but yeah, I think we've had quite enough. Of Jeff John's Justice League uh, for the moment. <laughs> honestly, I'm glad. Like, like, like that cliffhanger should be an exciting. Ooh, what's coming next? And it isn't because yeah. we've just had only so because like because like there are so many cool and interesting things you can do with Trinity War as an idea and the Trinity of Sin and and what that can mean. And they just like, don't plan any of that. Really. It felt like with the grid issues that we might be setting up the idea of breaking down the, the Clark and Diana relationship a little bit because mm-hmm. well that really just leads into the Superman Wonder Woman title yeah um, that's all it is yeah but like it like things that easily could be really important and tell a great story like you could uh, you could you know you could you could yeah we could reveal it well, how we could have ended it we could reveal a traitor like I said, possibly make the traitor element woman and make her have been confused. Cause there's this whole idea of that. She's not quite all there 
she's you know very scattered mm-hmm. and then make her have to make her the last should be mainly focusing on her comparing her to pandora coming to terms with herself and going to help and then teasing more of the outsider to somehow bring in the crime syndicate like yeah wrap something up um because like we don't know we don't know what happened to the justice league yeah we don't know what happened to vic yeah, he... and, and, and I can guarantee you, like, it all does get followed up on. Like, it's just, it's, none of it happens in the big event, which is meant to be the culmination of the New 52. Yeah. Um, it. <sighs> two years in, mind you. Two years in, never mind the New 52 would, would continue. That continuity would continue for a couple more, like, three, three more four. years. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, I, it's a real shame, honestly, like, yeah, this could have been one of the greats, and it isn't, like, the yeah. pieces are there, and, and it's, it's sad, I'm quite sad, um, I, I, I also can't help but also say you should check it out if you're interested in the John's run. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, not just for the fact that it is an essential piece of the run, um, but also that I think, there, again, there is such an interesting conversation to be had there. And it's not bad. I don't think it really is bad at heart. Um, but I think a lot of it, you know, just needed to be reworked to some degree. Um, and you can see why it exists in the way that it does, um, uh, whether that's a good thing or not. So, all right. I guess that about does it for Trinity War, doesn't it? Uh, that does. That does. Um if you'd like to purchase it, there's a link down uh, below. Yeah, there will be links to the Grid and Trinity Award down in the description. I'll leave Amazon links down there, uh, as well as a link to our next reading, uh, which will be right down there. Jacob, are you yeah. ready to find out what we're reading next time on Fresh Face Comics? Well, can I tell you what my guess was? Go ahead. Okay. Lay out all your guesses. So, my guess, and partially, honestly, this is partially because of the um, James Gunn slate, and just a little bit of, I want to read it. I really hope it's Batman by Grant Morrison. You mean uh, starting off with Batman and Son? Yeah, starting off with Batman and Son. Okay. What I, are your uh, other guesses? It's either that or my big fear, noticing that this is a four-episode block, and you have said we're going to be, we would be doing this, uh, this, this, this sort of event as a series of three episodes back to back to back. It's creeping into my head the fear that it might be Nightfall. Mm. Oh, was, oh, yeah, because we did talk about that. That I said like yes. we would do it the same way that I that we did Death of Superman as like one big block. Yeah. Um, do you have any other guesses? Um. See, my other guess is also possibly concluding this, doing Super Heavy and uh, Bloom, and then mm. following that up immediately with like the first Tom King volume. Okay. Those are like those are my those those are the places where my brain is drawing from so i want you to keep something in mind uh this block was made forever ago so it's i i didn't obviously know what james gunn would be announcing at the time so no i it's not grant morrison unfortunately that's that Um, is that is such a shame i mean grant morrison batman is on the schedule we're gonna do it eventually. it's also been it's it's, it's a guess i've had before for other episodes yeah yeah. it's trust me trust me we're we're gonna do it eventually Um, and 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 what i'm trying to say is the james thing is why it's at the front of my mind i got Um, you yeah um uh but i will say i think after trinity war i think you will welcome this with open arms at first uh next time on on fresh face comics we will be reading batman nightfall Um, oh no (laughs) we're we're doing it Uh, we're starting it for the next three episodes next episode will be nightfall episode after that will be night quest and episode 39 will be night's end um so yeah jacob like a dumbass recently bought the nightfall omnibus volumes in anticipation of this block and i just gotta laugh at those things because i think you've done that before where you just happened to to pre right. that that, right. that, that, like, that like we that we were about to cover it was uh, it was it was it was uh, jeff john's green lantern that's right yeah yeah yeah. Was... yeah you just recently bought that and uh we covered that not long after so oh, here we are this um, is terrifying so these are big books, obviously. We're specifically doing the paperback versions. So the Jacob bought the wrong edition. Like a dumb paperback. House. Well, I bought the complete edition, so they're all there. Um, yeah, but we're not going to cover all the issues in the Omnis that you bought. Yes. I will read so, them all, though. Just I'm going to send sh- you a list. I actually made a, a Google Doc earlier of, of the, okay. all the issues that we're going to cover. Cool. So 
Don't worry. We'll be good. We got this. Don't worry. I, um, I also have sticky tabs, so I'm going to sticky tab it. So I like... That's that is fair. Um, also, because it's so big, I don't think we're going to do as in-depth a discussion for the spoiler section that we like we normally do. No, I think we we're going to... I think we're going to I think we should both take notes on each issue and the key points we want to talk about and then move on to the next one. I actually agree. Uh, there may be like a couple of it, like I think I think there are at least two issues of what I know from the story that we should talk about in depth for sure, at least for Nightfall, mainly gotcha. mainly the, the the one that does Bane's backstory and then the one where the brat is broken, like like, um, I think those yeah. might be interesting, but other than that, yeah, we are going to try to keep it. It's not going to be short, but not too long. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, ah, that's this is going to be a thing. So yeah, uh, so yeah, that'll that'll be next time. It's uh, it's it, it is exciting, and honestly, you I know you know I have my issues with it. Um, but I think a lot of the early stuff, especially, is really strong. And I think you'll like it a lot more than you think you're going to. Yes. So, but I guess we'll see. We'll find out next time. We'll see. Um, it is a daunting task, I'm aware. So, right. uh, yeah. Um, I guess we'll see where that goes next time. So, uh, our, I, like I said earlier, our link trees will be linked down in the description below. You can follow us wherever it's available. Mostly Twitter, assuming it's still alive. Um, if not, we, hopefully something will have replaced Twitter. Yes. Um, um, you can support me and my online creative endeavors on my coffee. That'll be in my link tree as well. Um, other stuff on the channel. Uh, Breaking Brian, I think, is two videos in by the time this um, comes out. This is out at near end of February, so yes. We sh- yeah, we should have the second video out at that point. So yeah, um, if, so if not, it'll be coming out, out like... like well, well, no, it'll be up, I think, because this is out on the 27th. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah. So uh, also, uh, me and my brother are watching through Star Trek for the first time. You can go watch those videos. Uh, if you also want to hear my perspective on Star Trek, I'm writing reviews. Yes, you in... have your blog that you yes. write your reviews on. Um, so that's uh, pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I guess that about does it. Anything yeah. else? Uh, all right. All right. I guess that about does it. Um, until next time, this has been Joey Morgan and Jacob Licklider. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.